on this thing. Oh, there we go. I have to press the oh, have to press the options button. Do we? Okay. What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm fixing up a few things. This is this evil marine. Hmm. Do that later. Alright, what was the name of the last... Hold on a second, guys. I hate trying to come up with names of the stream. It's so annoying. Let's see, copy... Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, hey. So, uh, I met two world leaders. One of oh. them was like, leave the exploring to me, and the other one gave me delicious cakes and asked to visit my capital. Mmm, mmm, nice. Yeah. N none are trying to start a war with you. That's a good start. No, nah, but like, I'm like, yo, Bolivar, are you going to give me a map? <laughs> doing all the exploring for me? Dude, I don't know what was up with fucking Ethiopia yesterday. I'm like, what What the fuck did I do? No, Ethiopia is not historically a place with, a, with abundance of natural resources. Mm. Vietnam? Yo, fuck, fuck the fuck out <laughs> Vietnam. You're fucking Vietnam. You got a bad rep. Yeah. Don't com I wonder if commies still have uh, control over Vietnam. Who knows? Because they're run by commies. Who stop paying attention to them when it stopped being convenient? Mm hmm. Yup. Ah, shit. Stupid laptop. There we go. God, this touchpad thing is so fucking sensitive. Not that. All right, that's saved. Got your stream going. So we got New York, Washington, and Philly, eh? Cool. Yep. Nazca's trying, trying to farm all the rice in the vicinity, apparently. It's rice in <laughs> Atlanta. They're like, they're <laughs> like we, will, we like the ramen. Like, that's fine. Do your thing. I'm going to surround you, and then I'm going to mm. just keep you so that no one mm. hurts you, and you mm -hmm. trade with me. Mm -hmm. Sound like a deal? Sounds like a deal. Mm -hmm. Trade me that rice you keep farming. That was just so funny how, like, the last game you were like, yeah, I spawned too many battle units. And I was just like, well, I mean, if someone declares yeah, war and then they all got somebody. shot to death in one shot. <laughs> I'm like, shit. By some ginger motherfucker. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna spark this joint. I'm gonna try playing the Resident Evil remake. High as balls. 
probably scare the crap out of me. Yeah, but that just means you're having fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, hi, Katie. What? You like my lap, don't you? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get to it. <clears throat> this is how dumb my son's school is. Hmm. So, uh, you... Mm-hmm. The, he, the teacher, he told the teacher, this dude, that my dad got me a clarinet, right? Nice new clarinet. Today he comes home from school with the school's clarinet. And I'm like, didn't you tell the teacher you got a clarinet? I mean, we could what go the... over to your mom's and pick it up. Oh. And he's like, yeah, but they, they have, uh, it's easier to get your hands on a clarinet and a tuba at the school, apparently. So, so he's like, they sent one home just to practice with anyway, because they had them. I'm like, can't you just, like, either one, attract more people into this music program or buy the, you know... Buy some diversity in instruments so kids could choose between something besides clarinet and tuba. You said they don't I, have a single string instrument. I thought they. Well, yeah, I mean. You could get a cello for 600 beans, son. Damn, I haven't that even. That brighten some kid's fucking future. You yeah. might have the next fucking yo yo ma sitting next to you. Don't fucking oh, know. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's like. Hey, I, I played an orchestral instrument growing up, so. Yeah, but, like, seriously, like. He's not the only kid playing clarinet. I'm sure they don't have a clarinet for every fucking kid. They should send it home with somebody else. Mm-hmm. They can practice. Enjoy it. Yeah, I thought that they didn't have any clarinets. No, I just got him one because if he's going to learn an instrument, I want mm -hmm. him to stick with it and just mm -hmm. always be able to fuck around with it and pick it up. Right. That's the beauty of secondary instruments. You pick them up and you jam on them once in a while. Oh, and yeah. You know how to play it. Well, and then once you pick up <coughs> one instrument, like, say you're classically trained on one instrument, you can pretty much pick up almost any other instrument. But they started showing them, like, you know, how it works and the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how to hold it properly and the finger placement, what does what, which is good. Yeah, and then it's just a matter of learning how to read music, which, you know, something the music teacher should teach you. Yeah, but he already, he actually from Bob, he already knows. Mm hmm. I gotta retrain my brain on reading music notes. If you ever have any questions, music. just ask me. It's super fucking mm -hmm. simple. You know what stepwise motion is? Mm hmm. Now, let's say you got, uh, I would say C, but you know, let's say let's start on, uh, A. Right, whatever, A minor. So we're still in C, but now we're in A minor. Same key, it's just a mode. I overcomplicate things way too quickly. <laughs> anyway, if you're going to go from A to B, that's a whole step, correct? And if you're going to go from B to C, that's a half step. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, seeing as those notes are in your key, and you're going from one to the next, and you're not going like A, F, you know, A, F, B, C. That would be like all over the place. Stepwise motion is literally, literally like a, a set of stairs going up and down. Mm. Like A, B, C sharp, you know, whatever. Whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, just there's like a minor way to go key, up and major down key. Gradually without hopping mm -hmm. around, and it makes melodies yeah. more natural. That's what leads to most progressions having a standard thing of one, four, five, and such. Mm. But anyway, most music has stepwise motion inherent to it, so it's all kind of the same to read because it allows you to easily follow the voices. Because when you look at a piece of sheet music, you're going to see all these notes stacked. Right. And you're be like, what the mm -hmm. fuck is all this? Yep. Well, depending on. Are you playing it on piano? Or are you playing it on an oboe? Or are you playing mm -hmm. it on a guitar? Yep. You might you might only be playing some of those. Each line that moves across, that's why I said stepwise motion. Mm -hmm. With your soprano, alto, alto, tenor, and bass, those are all called voices. Mm -hmm. So if I jam, if I hit a fucking D chord on a guitar, I just, I'm hitting four different voices that compromise a chord. Because I yeah, have yeah, yeah, third, yeah. Fifth, mm -hmm. And I have a Again, same so. same with the uh, with the piano. Piano, you're hitting like multiple. Yeah, keys, you could play you, know? you could play a lot of voices on the piano. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The piano synthesizer, that kind of thing. Yep. Well, that being said, I mean, it's it's A through fucking G. 
And the notes on the staff don't move, so there you go. The piano's fun to play, but it's hard. For me, it is. Like, trying to keep up with one set of keys on, like, one hand, and then uh, doing a completely different rhythm on another hand, like... Yeah, exactly. That's my problem. I can mm -hmm. play something with my right hand, I can play something with my left yeah. hand. Now, if you ask me to play Turkish March, where with my right hand I'm going... Dun -dun 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 -dun. I can mm -hmm. play that part with my right hand. Mm -hmm. But the part where your left hand is going bum 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 I could do that with my left hand. Do them both together, nah, it sounds like I'm a fucking retard. Yeah. It sounds like there's literally something wrong with my brain, like yeah, exactly, because I'm just like, how do piano players do that? How do they play, like, one set of keys in one hand, and then, like, a completely different set of keys, or, or a completely different you, rhythm I'll, in I'll, another I'll hand? Tell, like... I'll tell you from watching Bob <laughs> teach my son. He teaches him his keys first, so he plays his scales. Uh -huh. And it's all about, he's extremely anal about which fingers my son is using. Oh. Because it's all about having that proper form, and then form. Your, your hands mm -hmm. remember how to move along the piano easier. Mm, I and then see. You're just, doing things <laughs> yeah i mean it's the same Music way with like amazing. yeah it's the same way with playing the drums i mean because like the drums, drums you have like fucking natural you man. you have you like someone drums yeah well it's like my uncle was cl i think he was classically trained on the drums but it's like so he was like so he was taught by like a jazz head or something yeah i think so i'm gonna have to talk to him about that because <laughs> i know he he's he because he's a drummer yeah well that's the thing drummers are very anal because they're like real only real drummers can touch my drum set and shit like that because mm -hmm. they don't want it fucked up by some fucking guy who plays like me yeah by plays like me i mean i could go bottom 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 on highway star and that's about it mm -hmm. yeah it's like i other than the violin it's like I don't, guitar and bass you know but and i just i i learned i just learned how to play guitar just by watching my friends play and they kind of showed me like where you know where to put you know like power chords and stuff like that yeah power chords are a whole other ball of wax mm -hmm. there's a power chord is your typical rock and roll chord yep that sounds like right mm -hmm. but that's not even a chord that's right. a double stop it's a root and a fifth, so it outlines a chord, but by playing a power chord, which goes root, fifth, root, uh, you're never going to know if that chord inherently is major or minor until you start listening to the song and you hear which power chords are played, and that's going to end up denoting your key and telling you what those chords are emulating if you were to add other notes. So if you played, like, a gun song, right, Guns N' Roses, and you hear donna dun 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 now you know what key you're in because you you heard all you heard the dun 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 mm -hmm. now we have an outline here which means that other notes have to be in there so now if we need to add extra notes to those chords to make it sound fuller we mm -hmm. just take those see mm -hmm. yeah and pedals dude pedals are expensive pedals yeah <laughs> everything with drums is just expensive. Anyway, like, once you know that outline, it will tell you what notes you have. Like, it will be, like, going from, oh, I could add any note that might sound like shit to here's my tackle box, and I could use a hula popper or a jitterbug right now. You know what I mean? Mm hmm That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Spanish Inquisition! No one suspects the Start Spanish Inquisition. Start Inquisition with one Apostle Charge. All religious units plus 15 religious combat strength in friendly territory. Ooh, but it takes away from science. No, fuck you. <laughs> no, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need that shit. I need prophets and scientists. Uh, try to think if I could get past this dog without getting his attention.
dogs in this game. Hey, they're quick out uh, zombie Dobermans. What do you want? Yep. Damn, you know, my scout went on a little trip. Remember that torch led before? Mm. It's some spoopy shit. Okay, mm lock that door. Resident Evil, anytime you notice anything that says that someone else is here, it's just like, uh, yeah, like, um, mm-hmm. Bad guys. Intelligent bad guys. Fuck. Hmm. Ah, okay. This is where... 
where I would use Z Dog with Soul. Dog killed me in one fucking hit. Oh my god, that was lame. I didn't realize that that dog would be an instant kill. Awesome. Well, at least I know where to go now. Random village give me the philosopher's stone. Mm. That's nice.
missile and be prepared to shoot. managed to beat this game. I'm still sitting here thinking how. Hey, Jetty. Hey, Jetty. Hey, guys. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Just trying to get Can't through it. Holmes. Yeah. Just trying to get through Resident the I just started the uh, RE1 remake. Uh I'm actually going to be playing some Resident Evil myself. I'm going to be playing mm -hmm. uh I'm actually going to play some Revelations 2. Oh, cool cool. I need yeah. to play that one. Oh, Resident Evil Revelations. Um after Code Veronica there were these uh there were the main titles, but then there were the Revelation series which were, are were the, basically the, the in-between stories. Were they it was the, basically like, a way to first-person to... shootery ones, or was that a different? No, no, no. no. Those Survivor. were the Chronicles games. Yeah, right. yeah. Those Survivor were the Umbrella and, and Dark Side Chronicles. Damn, how many fucking Resident Evil games are it's quite there? Quite a few. There's, There's quite a bunch few. of them now, mm -hmm. but the thing is, um, see, here's the thing. After Resident Evil Code Veronica, Resident Evil Four picked up the story of Leon, but they changed the direction of the franchise because mm -hmm. you weren't dealing with, you know, zombies, zombies anymore. anymore. You were dealing with, uh, you know. Zombies with guns that were that weren't eating you, but so so much as just trying to kill you. And, parasites um, infecting people. Instead yeah, of parasites. Like a virus. Yeah, the, Resident Evil Four was a major course correction in the franchise, and that's why I feel like after Code Veronica, Resident Evil just hasn't been the same, in my opinion. No, it hasn't. But, uh, as much but as I. I... Hmm. Oh, like, as much as I enjoyed Resident Evil 4, yeah, it, it's, the series hasn't been the same since Code Veronica. Yeah, and I did enjoy 5 as well, you know, the whole returning of Chris, Jill, and Wesker, and de settling that score once and for all. The only thing that I do notice was in the original script for that game that I really wish was in the main Resident Evil 5 story was Barry and Rebecca being involved because after all it should have been all four surviving heroes of the first game yeah. taking on the surviving villain oh totally but yeah I, um, love, it. I love plot holes by omission yeah but anyways like, um, well, there used to be this other dude now he's just not there he way to say fuck it and leave the second he was out yeah it's like, nah, any... I'm going to Verbatim, son. Fuck a bunch of you. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's the thing. For those of the plot, for some of the plot holes, the Revelation series is supposed to be kind of filling in because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Re Revelations one picked up on Jill and Chris, but it starts them off, you know, on two different sides of the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, them, they're each of them paired with a different partner, but then halfway through the story, they're reunited as partners, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I enjoyed but the, thing is, the first that Revelations. I enjoyed the Revelations games. Well, here's the thing. My only issue was that Veltro group. I feel like that should have been developed by Hunk because the way those guys were dressed, I thought it was like a team of Hunks, you know? Mm -hmm. And I felt like we d we were denied a con some closure with Hunk because he's still out there, you know? Right. Umbrella may have went down, but as far as we know, Hunk is still alive. Yeah. So well, who's Hunk? Oh, um, in Resident Evil 2, it was said there was this group of I don't know if you you have you played Resident Evil 2? Yeah. Not, okay, well, well I was 14 though. Okay, um, in Resident Evil 2, there was that cinematic <laughs> cutscene of two guys wearing those black suits and gas masks. Mm -hmm. One of them was known as Hunk. Hunk is like an abbreviation. <laughs> it's it it means human unit never killed. I was wondering what what the meaning of that was. Why his name was yeah. Hunk? Yeah, human unit never killed. Anyways, Hunk also gained the rep reputation of being known as Grim Reaper or Mr. Death because uh, he, out of every time he went on a mission with a team, he was the only one of his team to always survive. So he's nobody. 
Well, he's kind of like a nobody, but he's he's basically the Boba Fett of Resident Evil. <coughs> yeah, and the Works for me. and he's a unlockable character. You have to do <laughs> what is it? You have to beat the game in under so many hours, right? And then I think it's also uh, don't yeah. use don't use any first aid sprays. Like that's what I did. And yeah, I yeah, you had to them. heal with only herbs. Uh, Thankfully, yeah. they did. Thankfully, they did away with that mechanic in later games because mm. you know you you with so with so limited <laughs> herbs, you kind of need to heal. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless you have the entire the of the game memorized. Ah, uh, yeah. Like yours truly here. I actually yeah. managed to beat the game and get hunk without using you know like the any of the first aid sprays. I think I beat but it yeah. like under four hours too. Yeah, sadly, me and my dad, we never were able to unlock the hunk scenario of the original Resident Evil 2, but I did get manage to get it in the remake, obviously. <laughs> right, and I can't remember, how do you unlock Tofu? Cause... Oh, oh, Tofu is, you gotta beat the hunk scenario in the original oh, game. Oh, okay, that explains, because yeah. I could never, because, oh my god, that, that, that side game is a beast. Yeah, and trust me, the, I tried playing the hunk scenario in, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, remake? That mm -hmm. ain't no walk in the park, either. Oh, I bet. God, the RE2 remake was... Oh, my goodness, that was... Yeah, Capcom really outdid themselves, I think, with that remake. Just yeah. like the just like the RE one remake. Like my only issue with the remake is the is how they lack the B scenarios of both Leon and Claire, and they just told the two A scenarios. Yeah, I agree. And also what you said about the introduction of the game. I wish that it would have remained the same as it did in the first game, where it's like, you know, like Claire was at the restaurant and then. Leon was in an alleyway, I think. That's where he started. Yeah, well, actually, he was in the street, but he got forced yeah. into the alley because zombies were coming out of the woodwork and mm -hmm. he was backing into the alley to get away from them. Yeah. But, uh, I do, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like that they met it, I like the gas station scene. Right. Yeah, but, yeah. But, it, but, but we needed Emmy's Diner. Oh, yeah, totally. I thought that was, like, I thought, you know, it was a great introduction, the original game, you know, with, like, both Claire and Leon. Oh, my God. I, I it, it amazes me how difficult the RE1 remake was. Like, I think this is more dif- I'm having more difficulty with this game than I did the you original. You know what's fucked up? Hmm. All these games that I download from back in the day, they're never as easy to play as they used to be. For Whether real! It's the Warriors, Hitman, mm. fucking Twisted Metal, Black. Download oh. Twisted Metal, Black, the port's fucking terrible. I think half these games ain't what they're supposed to be. Oh, dude, tell me about- like, I went back and played, because I have a PS2, so I could play by copies of my PS1 games. I still have the original PS2 I tried to play. I'm like, how the hell did I beat this game in under four hours? And I know how that did I feeling manage to do because... that without without dying? Yeah, I know what you mean because uh, a couple like a, a year or so ago, I replayed my PlayStation One uh, game Spider Man from the year two thousand. Mm -hmm. You remember that one where uh, was that where, the side uh, by side beat 'em up that had Venom? No, that's Maximum Carnage. That game no, 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 no. The PlayStation One was. Uh, it was basically uh, Spider-Man was framed for stealing a, re a reformed Doc Ock's technology, but then by the end, it's revealed oh, that yeah, it, was, it was it was it hey, was actually Bong Doc Man. Ock and Carnage who did it. And then he beats Doc Ock, then he beats Carnage, but then the Carnage symbiote uh, bonds with Doc Ock, and so Monster Ock chases you out of the base. You you got it basically it was followed up by a sequel called Spider-Man Two: Enter Electro. Yeah, Bong Man, I can, I mean, personally, Resident Evil 4 is not my favorite of the series, but I mean, I like the game. I really enjoy yeah, it, you yeah. know, like the game, the, it, the, it was a game changer in terms of yeah, its controls. It just, it just wasn't Resident Evil, though. No, yeah, that, uh, but, but at the same time, there are some moments where I almost shit my pants, you know, in that yeah. game. Because, like, the whole part with the Ganados and the cabin, and you're having, you know, at you're having to deal with like it's yeah them coming from both floors holy crap that was like intense or i would get so nervous opening up you know a crate and hoping that a snake wasn't oh, yeah. in there <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah because that can sometimes be a pain oh my god like sometimes it's so bad like just be I... thankful just be thankful you don't have to worry about uh 
being poisoned in Resident Evil 4. Oh, that's oh, yeah, very that true. Oh my god, that would drive me insane. Like, you run past a si spider, he spits acid at you, and then you're poisoned. Like, fuck! Now I gotta go all the way back down this hall, back to the storage room to grab a blue limping. herb. Yes, while limping! And pray and hope that you don't run into any zombies, or it's that one of those corridors where you have to get past any zombies, because you left them there. Because you, you weren't sure if you had enough ammo to get to the other part, you know, the other side of the, you know, if it was, like, the mansion in the first game or the police station in the second game, like... But, yeah, there's just... There's some things that I liked about Resident Evil 4 and some things I didn't like. I mean, the, like, yeah. I, I love the controls. I, I love that yeah. over-the-shoulder, like... Yeah, because, I mean, that kind of stuck with the franchise after that. Yeah, and I don't But a lot of people will, and I understand, though, a lot of people will do miss the fixed camera angles thing that and they I get, get in the original ones. I get it. Yeah. You know, especially playing the RE1 remake, I mean, the graphics are just beautiful, and you know what? Even for tank controls, it, it, it runs smoothly. Yeah, but the thing, so yeah, back to what I was saying to Jesse, um, after Resident Evil 4 and 5 and 6 started coming out, they did these games called Revelations. Mm -hmm. like, like I said, they told independent stories from the main timeline, but they mm -hmm. they kind of, while the while the mainline series from that point forward focused on a mindless uh, Michael Bay style action, the Revelations games stuck to the survival horror mm -hmm. roots. Yeah, and they tried they're to, enjoyable. And they tried to, yeah, I, I didn't really get into Revelations 1 because it was just another Chris and Jill adventure, no mm. different than RE5. As much as I liked RE5, right. I'd already seen what I needed to from yeah. Jill and Claire. I was like, what about the gotcha. other characters that we don't see much of? Gotcha. And then Revelations 2 came out telling yep. us about Claire and, and Barry Burton. my favorite character back because Claire's my favorite character. And I was like, Claire's... when are you bringing Claire back? <laughs> yeah, Claire's my favorite as well. And But I also like that we got a character we hadn't exactly played as before, but was in the mm -hmm. original game. Oh, Barry, yeah. Barry you Burton. get to play as Barry, which all of us Resident Evil fans are like, hey, when are you going to release a game with Barry as a playable character? Yeah, and because that, and that's another thing too. I mean, we don't. I mean, it's, I I enjoyed playing as Barry in this, and I'm glad knowing that there was some backstory added to him. But Rebecca, we don't know what happened to her. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'd came, like to know what happened to her too. Yeah, because I mean, there was this recent move, a CGI movie, Resident Evil Vendetta. And it's the first time we've seen Rebecca since Resident Evil 1, mm -hmm. but we still don't know what she had been up to in that right. in that time. We because I mean yeah, here's exactly. the thing. Because I mean the thing. OP now is she like just been off the map forever and she's the same. Well, she was seemingly OP in Resident Evil Zero, but it then it makes no sense in Resident Evil 1 where she's like almost weak and f and helpless again. So that's why right. there's this one theory on Residents of Evil, a fan site, that, oh, yeah, uh, I know that. that she might have actually hit her head and was making up Billy Cohen and all that other stuff. Oh my god, if Billy Cohen's not real, I'm going to cry. I okay, love, here's I what I will him. say. I love Billy Here, here's, what I will, here's what I will say. What I would like to see in a Resident Evil game is it's like Resident Evil 3, but different. A Resident Evil focusing on Rebecca Chambers and a, yes. and a, and a returning Billy Cohen, yes. but in Raccoon City during the outbreak. Because mm -hmm. remember, mm -hmm. yeah, Jill, yeah. She, she didn't get into the whole, she didn't start run, surviving until like, you know, as, after the city went down. Right. So like Rebecca, she would have probably been involved already or on another side of town trying to survive. Mm -hmm. She could have run into Billy who had been right. hiding out in Raccoon City for the past few mm -hmm. months. Yeah. And Resident then the, Evil 2 was cool, man. You come up yes, out of a was. fucking sewer grate and there's like a cop car there and it's just like, what the fuck happened here? Yeah. For real, for real. That's it's... like one of the best parts. That's like what made me a fan of that series. Mm. Yeah, I mean... Then it's I... just like, yo, there's zombies. I found five bullets. Let's rock and roll. Well, it's <laughs> yeah. like, I was freaked out. Like, I remember playing the first game. My brother and I played the first game. And, like, the zombie popped out of the closet. Scared the shit out of me. That, like, left an impression on me. And I, and when... Hey, you know, you know what real, you know what scared me first? Hmm. Resident Evil 2, when you're going through the west, uh, the west hallway on the first floor of the police station, but when yep. you come back down to... Re and then there's to, a zombie there that wasn't there before. No, 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 not that, not that. When you're doubling back down that same place to get to the main hall, 
Mm-hmm. The arms shoot through the wooden, oh, the boarded oh, window. Oh my yeah, god, yeah, yeah, that twice. makes me shit myself. Twice. And not just once. Twice. And not just once. Yes. Yeah, twice. twice. Like, the first time, it gets you. But then it immediately happens again, and you're like, what the fuck? I'm going to well, shit my pants. And then, and then another time, <laughs> and then I think in Nemesis, they repeated it again with, like, the fucking zombies crashing through the fucking boards in the yeah. wall. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, oh, and then Nemesis gave me so many fucking nightmares. Hey, 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 like I said, yeah, like I said, like first time. fucking German's wet dream. Mm. Like I, like I said, the first time I played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on my own without help from my dad or without watching my dad, first time I played it on my own, I had to go to the bathroom every five minutes because I had to pee. <laughs> oh my god, I mean... <laughs> Keeping it loose, keeping it loose. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna pee myself again. This game is too much. No, like, I remember first playing the demo to Nemesis, and when it got yeah. to, like, towards the end when you had first encountered Nemesis, yeah. or, like, you know, when you're in the police station, you the go to that fight. one room, and you hear the you hear the window break, and the music stops. Uh. I remember playing that, getting to that part in the game for the first time, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, wait a minute, why did the music <laughs> stop? You know, and then you go, and then the, the door loading large. screen, and then, then he fucking pops through the window. I'm like, oh my fucking god, I'm gonna die. And then how many times does he chase you throughout the game? And you just hear, you hear the little musical sting, and you're just like, where the fuck is he? My favorite encounter with him is in that hallway. Where you just run to the right, and then you run to the left, and you go through the door, and then he's gone. I always love that. Oh it's my like, god, uh, it's so I great. I like it's such a so... fucking uh, smart Oh yeah, when I wasn't it like that. that Y adjacent alleyway or something like that? Like, I think it was around yeah, where, the, yeah, I think where, like, the yeah, fire right. extinguisher, I think where you use that. God, you got a good memory for this shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, I... Yeah, well, Dude, I've seen... Dude, I've played I, that I've, game I've... so many fucking times. I, I can't even I tell you. I have both played and rewatched the game. Because, I mean, mm. sometimes as much mm-hmm. as I do like the play... The, to watch it's, the, the replays too yeah yeah it's fun to watch it on the it's fun to watch like someone you know like do a non-commentary playthrough so that way you can watch it like a movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah sometimes i watch it just for Except fun for the holy shit mm. oh my yeah. God. well that's what that's where some of the fun is because even when you're not playing as it you could still get scared if well, you're not expecting it and then you have the scenarios it's like okay do i deal with nemesis in the restaurant or do i deal with him in the fucking press the press building like okay i get oh i get to decide where i want to go okay yeah i think there is a specific pa- uh, per- uh pattern that was established as the main events like for example mm-hmm. i think you do fight him in the uh the, i think well here's the thing if you do choose to uh encounter him and or and carlos in the diner the mm-hmm. best thing to do is to either hide in the cell in the the cellar or to uh, blow up the the, the kitchen, because either way, yeah, I think blow it's... up the kitchen. That's what I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I think what it is is you go down to the cellar. If it starts to flood, that way when you escape, yeah. that way when Car- when she says to Carlos, "I need to ask you something," that's when he'll decide to flirt and say, "I know you want to ask me out." Mm-hmm. All the foxy ladies want to ask me out. I love what? Carlos. What? Keep dreaming. I love Carlos. I fucking that love Carlos. that line is so specific great. to. In order to get that line, you gotta not have Carlos mm. or Jill actually see Nemesis during that mm. uh, diner incident. Mm. So you see, gotta. So I think. So I think that's you gotta hide down in the. See, basement I would choose. That. I would choose. I would choose the press office every time because to me the press office was a lot easier to escape from Nemesis than in the fucking restaurant. Yeah. Plus he jumps down through the second. Off, oh off the roof. my god! Yeah, that shit got me. I'm just like, really? Yeah. Okay, how many more times am I going to encounter this guy? Yeah, but I do know this. The canon ending, at least established initially before the remakes, is that uh, by the end, when Nikolai, Nikolai does not die, he steals the helicopter and escapes the city. Oh. And, and Barry has to pull the last-minute rescue on them. Nikolai is the bad one, right? He's, he was the yeah, long Yeah, Nikolai's guy, right? the yeah. bad guy. Yeah, he, I well, liked, actually, uh, the, Mikhail actually Mikhail white hair. Mikhail was my favorite. I love Yeah, it, actually, it was a white <laughs> hair. White hair for uh, Nikolai. Yeah, Mikhail was like he was my favorite. It's like he just oh he yeah, took, and he he, he took on just... he took on Nemesis like a badass in that trade. 
Yeah, and he's not just great. Nick Mikhail's not just great because of his character. He's mm-hmm. also great in that ex, in that mercenaries mode because he had the mm-hmm. best weapons. He had oh, a yeah. rocket la- freaking launch rocket launcher in his arsenal. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the rocket was key. You've got that rocket, you're like, I'm gonna shove this up Nemesis. Fucking <laughs> hey, yo, yo. Except here's shoot the thing. Him. Like, I'm gonna Except shoot him right in the fucking heart with this thing. <laughs> Except here's the problem. In uh, in the mercenaries mode, you got to encounter Nemesis multiple times and two different versions. You had if you there was Nemesis one. Resident well, Evil ne- Three was one of the coolest Christmas presents ever. Hmm. That I cannot disagree with. Yeah, it was just a really good game. Ah, like, for fuck's sake! Oh, plus, stupid wasn't fucking that the dog. They, they introduced decision making. Yeah, yeah. Well, technically, well, technically, decision making was a thing in the original game, but it didn't have that, you know, you that know, screen. screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, depending on your choices in the original Resident Evil, you could oh, decide God, if good those games were. Hmm. For real, like. <laughs> uh, element to that I totally forgot until this conversation <laughs> yeah because the thing is in the uh, uh, yeah in the original in the original Resident Evil certain decisions you make would determine who lives and dies at the end yep yep <laughs> I got the bad yeah, ending in the game first fresh. game yeah I got yeah, the bad and, and, ending and when it, I first played it and it also introduces the it it, 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 it gives the game replayability yes it did it absolutely did. Yeah, because, I mean, it's one thing to play it once, but when it has more features to make you want to play it over and over and over again, you know it's good. Yeah, it's because like that's you have two different characters to play as with different abilities, you know, like, it's like say, like, the first game, right? You got Chris and Jill. They ha- they have two different abilities from each other. Yeah, so that's because... The replay value. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's the thing about video games are like movies. Yep. If it's something so good that you want to watch <laughs> slash replay it over yep. and over and over again to yep. the point where you pretty much destroy the disc, it's would that worth it? That was me in Resident Evil because I was determined to actually <laughs> beat the game in less, in less time than I actually beat it previously. Yeah, because I mean most of the movies the I grew up on – <laughs> Yeah, because that's one of the things I like about, you know, movies like Lethal Weapon and all that, <laughs> that they were so Excuse great, me, such sorry. great movies. You, I mean, that's why I love popcorn flicks. You can mm-hmm. sit down and watch them again and again, and by that, doing that, you memorize just about everything about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't wait till you watch The Goonies. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. I still have yet to see it all yes. the way through, but I you, will you, give you, the Goonies oh, a seat. You, you need some good munchies, some Coca Cola, mm, uh, a fat doobie, and the Goonies. Oh, Goonies is Goonies is love. Goonies is life. It's like you've got to watch that. That's got to be at your Mega priority Jetty. list, Jetty. Up there, we're nobody, but it, down here, it's our time. It's our, it's our time, time down, down here. here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, it'll make more sense to me when I see the movie. <laughs> yeah, well. I love that. George Washington. Dude, it's got short round and Corey uh, Feldman. You can't uh, go Martin wrong. Sheen. Oh, and Martin the Sheen, the President Sean Kennedy, Astin. you idiot. As a child. Sean Astin, <laughs> yep. Yeah, and a, and a Thanos. Very, and a, yeah, very young Thanos, that's right. It's got Agent Smith. Oh, and uh, by the way, Jesse, I don't think I had a chance to tell you. The one Revelations game I'm playing right now while ta- chatting with you guys, Revelations 2, even though it's it's its own unique story, it does have lots of callbacks to Co Veronica, but good callbacks. For example, it, it starts off with Claire locked in a prison. When I, now, when I got uh-huh. stuck in Co. Code... Oh yeah. Oh, you mean like on now, the plane? How far? Oh, how close to yeah, the ending was, uh, was I? Tyrant. You mean oh. Uh... This, now, when you say scaffolding, do you mean actual scaffolding, or was it like yeah, it was in like a, metal, a it was like metal grate scaffolding. Was it the blind guy? No, it was a bitch. Oh, okay. a bitch. So, so bitch. Alexia, then I'm thinking, because oh, you were at the, the final one. battle, I think. No, oh, that's great. as far so, as I, I got. I got to the final battle with no ammo, and I saved right there. Great. That's that's what happened with me. I had like no, virtually no ammo, and that's a fucking game. I got as far right as, as Alexia. When you can't go back through the last door, what yeah, the is this shit. It just, it sucks because I love the story and the characters of the setting, the Code Veronica. I just, but the game is so freaking hard compared to the other three. 
Oh yeah, I won't disagree there. The for, the Co Veronica is a great story and great atmosphere, great music, great characters. And I know people will bash Steve for being annoying and whiny, but I still think he's I, a good character. I ship and I ship him and Claire. I don't care. But you know? I will admit the gameplay was a little fl mm -hmm. cl clunky and uh, yeah. could have been a little improved on. Yeah. That's why I don't understand why Capcom didn't just remake Code Veronica. Four does not need a remake. It's it's fine yeah. enough as it is. Just just remaster the graph or put it through the RE engine. I guess I could see it through the like the RE engine. Like I could you know, but I just it really didn't need another an, a remake. If anything, Code Veronica, I'd remake Code Veronica and Survivor. Because I think Survivor really needs a remake. Because personally, I enjoyed that game a lot. Yeah. But yeah, I understand why good. people didn't like it. Because, you know, the graphics were terrible. If you thought and the acting... And some of the gameplay in... was... Yep. And some of the gameplay needed some improvement. Yeah, and then if you thought the acting in the first Resident Evil game was bad... Huh, the acting and dialogue in Survivor is taken to a whole new level of cringe. Oh, yeah. But That's, other... That sucks. Yeah, and it's just sad because, like... What I like about the game is that, you know, first off, it's the first first person perspective get Resident Evil game. <laughs> so imagine, you know, shooting, trying to shoot a zombie or a B.O.W. in first person is pretty fucking scary. So that there's that. And then secondly, they added like different pathways you could choose from in the game, which really added to the replay value. Like, oh yeah, each, like, each each pathway had its own story. And it had and its own story, story and its own character. Oh yeah, you could, could always could reboot uh, the filling of a bull fed. <laughs> you know, yeah, because like at the beginning of the game, you get to choose between okay, do I check out the church or the movie theater or the uh, um what the the restaurants. And then depending Theater, on which... restaurant, or even the yeah. arcade. Yeah, the arcade. No, no, yeah. no, that's later no, the on. Arcade the arcade was later on. Yeah, it let... yeah, the church. Right. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, the church, the restaurant, and then the theater was the first pathway. Second pathway. Yeah, the arcade, arcade was like the second or third. Arcade, hospital, and library was the second pathway. Hmm. So, and then in the second pathway was the side character that you'd be following. There were three different side characters. Yeah, yeah. There was, uh... There yeah. Was, there was the guy who was, like, kind of like Hunk. He's, like, SWAT team or something like that. You you mm -hmm. encounter him if you go into the arcade, and then in, um... The Hoss... Is it the ho Either the hospital or the library, one is the janitor guy who encountered... Who knew who Ark Thompson was, or what he was yeah. doing. Who's Ark Thompson? Oh, he's the main character you play Oh, as. not Ark Thompson, but... um, Vincent. Is the, yeah, well, the well, bad guy. no, 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 no. His, well, yeah, our, Vincent is the name of the bad guy. Ark yeah, Thompson Ark is the hero. the hero. But yeah. when Vince, but when, but when Ark wakes up with amnesia, he he thinks he's he's being led to believe he's Vincent. Yeah, yeah, and and I liked that angle. Like, oh, we've got a character who like blacks out, you know, and might be the bad guy, but he's actually the good guy. Mm -hmm. And then he encounters this bad guy who looks exactly just like him, and I'm sitting here like. Are these twins like separated at birth or something? Did, no, no, they're did... not twins. They're, they don't look alike. It's just they. He got the dog. The bad guy go took the good guy's dog tags. Oh, but they look alike though. They do. And then, and, well, and then, and then that old man who found out about what Vincent was doing, he mistaken Ark for Vincent. Well, that's one of the versions, but you, you like I said, you got to see all three stories to get the full gist of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I was like, this is a game that, you know, give this a remake. Because I want the whole story, you know, because they could certainly add more to it. And then eventually, you know, we find out what happens to Ark in another game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, um, Revelations 2... It's basically uh, Claire uh, trapped in a prison again, but this time it's di like different circumstances. And she even makes a reference to Steve Burnside from Resident Evil Code Veronica because uh, I need you that know, reunion to happen. Damn it! Please, Cap, well, go make it happen. Well, like I said, I don't know the full gist. I just know that uh, she uh, she needed to pick up a gun, and then she quotes him when she when he. Uh, when she says it's more reliable than any person. Oh my god. Like, don't tease me like this, Capcom. I need a reunion between those two.
I mean, because technically, wasn't Maggie it you Daddy, that... Why don't you just email these people and try to get a job <laughs> there? <sighs> Believe me, I... They, look, need I'm story. Not, right? they need story people, obviously. Well, here's... Well, here's the thing. They have all the lore. They they wrote this sh most of this yes, shit. They're yes. just choosing to drop it in favor of telling new stories uh, with new viruses, new monsters, and and bullshit. So what without, you're telling me without... is that after you build a foundation and a first floor, you actually want to see a second floor mm -hmm. and a roof? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And but gotcha. they instead that instead they want to instead they want to build the the roof before they build the third they, and fourth yeah, floor. Yeah. Before they have renovated everything else stupid. about the house. Yeah. Or worse. Now they. You just or, or even worse, they don't want to build the roof at all. They just want to build the multiple floors. Ah. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about where they're taking the story. Like, uh, yeah, because I mean, that's the thing. I mean, Resident. It's like they had something going by Co Veronica. Say what you want about the game and the gameplay, but the story. It had good. It was setting something up with the right. way that that last cutscene of Chris saying we gotta destroy Umbrella now let's finish this once and for all. Yeah. You then go to Resident Evil Four, and, like, and then the happened? opening and monologue fell. says, "Like what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, due to bad stocks. I mean, what the hell, Capcom? We were promised a, a cl climactic clash, not a freaking monologue saying right. hey, stock prices fell." Yeah, that we didn't. Bullshit. We didn't get full closure on Umbrella. They could have taken Umbrella, like, done like so much. But now you've got this new Umbrella in Seven and Village, and I'm it, just like, okay. It doesn't make any sense, and it con it just does not make any sense. Is what the problem is. You you were setting up an epic final clash, and then you freaking just cut it off at the piss. Like, I can understand, like, cutting off, like, Stars and Raccoon City, because Raccoon City got blown up. Stars is basically local. So I can understand the BSAA serving as, like, the global, like, you know, answer to, um, to Stars, you know, like, what, yeah. what Chris and Joe personally, were doing I think, Personally, I think they should never have just founded the BSAA. They should have just taken Stars and took it to a, a made it go from like a, a more simple SWAT level? team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of like how Cobra Kai wanted to go from an all valley tournament to international. Yeah, because I thought that Stars was a branch of RPD. It was like a special unit of RPD, which Raccoon City is a local, you know, police department. Yeah, so they had, like, I, but here's, Stars well, more of a uh, national. Yeah, but here's the thing: in maybe in Capcom canon, it was just meant to be I a simple stars thing for would just spread along with wherever the zombie outbreaks went. And they'd have to make right. Franchises. Oh, oh, well, you mean like yeah, private, yeah. like private, like private security type stuff? Or uh, yeah, kind of. Like, 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 well, like, like they'd actually be funded by Umbrella eventually to be like a fucking hush hush uh, queen of fucking. Oh queen. right, yeah, because you have Wesker. Because you have the whole thing with Wesker. Well, see, here's he was, the thing. You know, playing both well, sides. Here's... Well, here's my stance on that. In the official Capcom uh, telling of the official Resident Evil lore, mm -hmm. Stars was only in Raccoon City. But in the S.D. Perry Resident Evil novels that I really prefer in some respects and enjoy, Raccoon's uh, Stars was, Raccoon City was not the origin of Stars. Stars started in um, uh, in New York City. Mm. So, yeah, it was like okay. meant to. And and it actually worked side by side with SWAT. It was basically while well, SWAT dealt with terrorism, Stars dealt with cults. Mm. You know what's and, funny? You know who else did that? The KGB. Really? Yeah, really? In Russia, there was a uh, group called the Castrators of Russia, or the Skopsi, and they were they believed that by eliminating their genitals, mm. all that all that energy to go into their spiritual awakening. Uh. And, and the KGB was keeping lists of who they found and how they did it, where they did it, and they were trying to get a hold on how many fucking people this was, and they were trying to stop it, because it was obviously fucking insane. Uh. Wow. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, secret police are always bad. <laughs> There's a cult of people who like to cut off their fucking shit. <laughs> well, here, but anyway, yeah. What's your religious yeah. tenets? We cut off our shit and we beat ourselves for God. What? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't. Hate I'd that. rather drink the fucking Kool Aid. <laughs> but At yeah, anyway. That's got sugar in it. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, well, uh, in the it, like I said, in the official canon, 
stars is just in Raccoon City, but in the novels, they started in New York and then branched out to several other states and eventually found their way to Raccoon City, which was the most recent uh, one. Mm. But, uh, I, and personally, I kind of prefer that. Just like I kind of prefer how in the S.D. Perry novels, Jill wasn't just some generic Delta Force uh, sol trained soldier before joining S.T.A.R.S. She would she would have been a cat burglar, kind of like Black Cat or Catwoman. And I would have had it where the That's Delta really Force... Different. Yeah, because remember, she's supposed to be the master of unlocking, as Barry oh, called her. Oh, I was wondering, like, yeah, because Jill could do all this stuff, like, she could pick locks and stuff, but she could even mix chemicals. Like, Chris couldn't do that in the first game. Yeah, so how else does she become the master of unlocking, uh, mm -hmm. if not a cat burglar? Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and so, yeah, that's why I feel like she should have been someone with a sketchy background you, you, before you know she that, changed uh, In real life, you don't, you don't really crack safes with all that shit, you just roll them. And that's why I personally feel like Jill should have had, a, like, a sketchy background before joining Stars. and the whole trick is, and, the, and here's how I would have it. Uh, the novels had it where her father was Dick Valentine, the uh, a notorious cat burglar. He got arrested, and after he got arrested, she turned her life around. I would have it where she did she she first tried to strike out as her, on her own as a cat burglar, but then she got caught and the arresting West, uh, the arresting officer was Wesker, and that way he would offer her a means to uh, uh, basically try to reform her life. Makes mm. sense. And uh, but the thing is, the whole reformation of her life is just a means to get her right where he wants her, which is to be used as a lab rat. I'm gonna have a soda. That's right where I want. Hmm. Oh, I should get my, uh, drink out of the fridge. My strawberry lemonade coconut water. Hey, but we had Chinese food today, and I didn't Ooh. feel violently ill at all. Oh, good, good, good! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Jesse's better! Yay! Fucking... This f fucking game. Yeah. Hey! Jetty, okay. Yeah. Um, do you? Do, uh, I need your advisement on uh, the RE1 remake. Okay. So I got to the part where I have to use the dog whistle to call the dog. Mm -hmm. How the hell do I deal with this thing? Because every time, because it seems like it's an instant kill whenever I get attacked by one of these dogs. Are you playing it on a hard difficulty? Um, I'm doing the. Uh, I think it's the, not mountain mode, but. Ah, the one below that. It's like... You know how, like, they had the different sayings for which mode uh, is Trevor which? Trevor Noah's fired. Oh, good. Bye. We could go, him and Jack Lemmon go suck each other off. Bye, bitch. Bye. <laughs> Wait a minute. All these shows are losing money. This is a lot of money. Yeah. Where's all the money? It's gone. Who oh, would have thought? Get woke or broke. Well, <laughs> here's what I would... Here would... Here's all I can suggest, Lindsay. Use the shotgun on the dogs for when you gotta use the dog whistle. Who are you, Michael Vick? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's some oh, cool boy God. shit. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I know you're talking about zombie dogs with no skin. That's okay. Just well, trying to help no skin, Lindsay it's win. It's easier to shoot them. Oh, my God. Just trying God. to help Lindsay get it's through like her, her difficult scenario. Well, no, because I think... Because I can't, I can't get the, I can't get the shotgun until I get the armor key, and I think I have to get the armor key in the uh, area where the, uh, the trap is, and I think I get that from the dog. To, it's like a replica key that I have to set to get the armor key. I think I get uh, that off of the dog, so yeah, I can't yeah, get yeah, the cause... shotgun. Oh, you know what I mean? Well, like I'm just trying to figure out. Uh... Oh, wait, I'm trying to think. Is there... Oh, I should probably explore this area a bit. Oh, this is a... This is a long corridor. <laughs> oh, this door, I think, unlocks, does it? Yep. Okay. What's in here? <laughs> Oh my god, these, uh, ghosts- Oh! Oh, I got cheddar popcorn. Nom noms. Okay, the munchies are starting to kick in. 
Yeah, well, I, all I, I can say is this. If you, um, if you don't have the shotgun yet, then I may, I, I don't know, I, I can only just say, shoot, shoot, shoot. Yep. Because, I mean, it may take up a lot of ammo, but at least you'll down the damn bastards. And maybe t you might have to take a hit or two and then have to heal with that uh, with the, those that, that thing of uh, green herbs. But you might only get a few uses out of it. I'm smoking some green herb right now! <laughs> no, I should do that too. Oh my god, the shutter popcorn is so good. But yeah, um, I actually have a few. Well, one idea is not exactly mine. It was from another YouTuber who likes uh, Resident Evil, uh, the fourth snake. Mm -hmm. This one idea he has of what we w should have in a Resident Evil is to kind of bring back Jill. Because not only are fans demanding a return of Jill, but... Mm -hmm. There's all we also yeah. need a return of we need we also need a return of Carlos because yes. other than Resident Evil three we don't know what happened mm -hmm. with him. That's right. So yeah. his theory was after the events of Resident Evil five, you know, after she just been freed from being brainwashed by Wesker, Jill's trying to settle back in, take some time off in like a small town, like maybe in Maine or something like that. And then one night she goes to bed, everything's fine. Then the next day she wakes up. And the place is littered with T-virus zombies. Oh, great. And then C Carlos comes along to help her, and it's revealed that the person responsible for all this is, in fact, Nikolai, still alive, right, and but, but getting paid. Let me stop you right there. Can we turn this into a road trip buddy comedy, kind of like Zombie Land meets Resident <laughs> <Yeah>. Evil? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it could I don't work. See a pro I don't see a problem with that. We've never gotten to travel in Resident Evil. Well, that's kind of that's the point. Resident Evil's meant to be, you know, isolated in like in like cut off from society hey, while you're that, fighting for your should... loss. Yeah, but we're it, at the point where shit's hit the fan, right? Yeah, but die, basically, Resident Evil's supposed to be die hard with zombies. Well, and you know what like die hard is, die hard right? With zombies, yeah. My, um... yeah, die hard is you're trapped in like this isolated area, all alone, limited ammo and everything. I gotta find a spot where I could shoot these dollies. Damn it! Fucking... I thought this Magnum was supposed to be powerful enough to kill these fuckers. Countries. Building countries is fun. So how come when they made fucking Resident Evil the movie, they ignored, like, all of Resident Evil? Uh, well, I don't... Oh, well, here's no. the thing. Um, whatchamacallit, um, what's his name again? Romero? George, George Romero? Romero, yeah. He, he made a script that... He made a script that was mostly based on the yeah, original... Yeah, he, uh, he was a little more accurate than, uh, than the final product. Like... Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, they they said no to his idea, and then they took Paul W. S. Anderson's idea uh, uh, approach. And remember, he did give us a good Mortal Kombat movie at the time, and arguably still is a good movie. Mm-hmm. But first yeah, one? yeah, the very first Mortal Kombat movie. Well, first Paul W. S. Anderson was, was did. The um, first one was decent. Yeah. The second one was ass. The first yeah. one would have been good if it was like twice as deep. Yeah. <laughs> The second one was shit. Yes, but here's the thing. But I will say this, as bad as that second one was, there are worse movies nowadays compared to that. Of course, there's gonna be something shittier. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, um but yeah, I guess because he did good with Mortal Kombat, they thought, hey, this guy made a did a, a, a live action adaptation of a video game. Well, maybe he could do one with Resident Evil, and that's why they took his treatment. And I'm not gonna lie, that first film, it may not have been. It, if you look at that one film in isolation, it is good in its own right because it could have been its own version of how the T virus got leaked in the Arclay Mansion. Yeah, and then I kind of look forward to the sequel going into Raccoon City because it would be almost like retelling Resident Evil 2 and 3, but with Alice thrown into the mix. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, sadly, I wouldn't mind that, but... Yeah, it's just that they didn't handle it well. They turned her into a Mary Sue and everything. Mm-hmm. Really and heck, good. and heck, stupid. every... And not to mention every time that, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Jill did something badass in that movie, they had Alice one-up her. So stupid. Well, yeah. It's like it's it's like what Howard Payne said in uh, um, uh, Speed. Oh, we got all the balls in the world right here, man. (laughs) Yeah, and then Netflix comes out with that god awful show, and then I'm just like, ah, I guess, I guess the movies. Uh, I forgive the movies after after that abomination. I'm like, oh yeah. Hey, nowadays there's always someone saying, "Hold my beer, I can do worse." Mm-hmm. Sounds and about honestly, right. And honestly, they gotta stop doing that and just give good quality. Good thing there's that tray of herbs there. Oh. Cause otherwise I'm gonna die. Alright, I took care of that dog problem. Right now I'm currently uh, ma- uh, prancing around as Claire Redfield in a pair of very short Daisy Dukes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm kind of bummed that they changed her outfit in uh, in the remake. Yeah, I mean, well, and I do like that they gave you, like, a rendition of her classic look. Obviously, they yeah. trimmed the sleeves of her shirt. Mm-hmm. But but see, here's the thing I do know. That black underneath her uh, her jeans and vet, her shorts and vet vest, that's mm-hmm. supposed to be like a, a, a short motorcycle outfit. Just mm-hmm. short sleeves and short p- pants. Yeah. So, <laughs> but if you're going to just give her a tank top, why have the, the black extended shorts? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, so Claire I'm playing as right now is in a, like a like a rodeo cowgirl type outfit. She's got Daisy Dukes, a uh, red and black checkered uh, button shirt that's tied in a knot between her chest, and uh, cowgirl boots and a holster for her six shooter and a cowgirl hat. And her hair is let loose. And don't get me wrong, it's nice seeing her with her hair let loose, but Claire's known for her ponytail. Her ponytail, yeah. 
And that's the thing that often kind of bugs me a bit with this new direction in games. They gave Jill the long hair and ponytail to the point where it's she, they're making her look like Claire. Certain certain characters are defined by their distinctive looks and appearances. So when yeah. you give Jill long hair in a ponytail, you wonder is that is that really Jill or is that Claire, but now wearing blue? Right. Yeah, no. Oh shit, I'm gonna be encountering a Crimson Head soon, aren't I? Ah, that's another thing about the RE1 remake, those damn Crimson Heads! Oh yeah, remember that in the RE1 remake when um, you'd kill the zombies and then you'd leave the room and you'd come back and you're like, why is the body still there? And then you encounter yeah. the can and then you count encounter the canteen canister in the room and like, oh, I could fill this thing with canteen. Well, oh, I have to burn the bodies. Why? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that oh was an interesting God. I will thing that I was, will say. I really liked that that well, add-on. Well, here's what I've, I I wanted to say. In the original Resident Evil games, when you leave a room after you kill a zombie, the bodies just disappear. Yep, yep. And in that very first Resident Evil movie with, you know, Mila, um, I liked the, the one scene where when they go back to the... To oh, the, my, God, the oh my God, oh my God, it's... it's uh, ha, ha, I just... Uh, yeah, he got up. Okay. Holy shit. Well anyways, well, anyways, when you go back to the room where they disabled the Red Queen... uh. Kaplan, he's like, where are the bodies? Where'd they go? That was a reference to that. Mm. Because the bodies of their teammates were in that hall, that laser grid hallway, but mm. then when they go back after being attacked by the zombies in Dining Hall B, they're gone. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting callback, but still, it doesn't make sense. You know, that was another thing that disappointed me about the RE2 remake. No Crimson Heads. Well, remember, they did make reference to it. Remember, if you play as Leon, the moment Leon and, Leon and Ada first encounter Annette Birkin, she's like, I gotta dispose of this body. And she burns it. Yeah! When they're trying... Yeah, that's the reference. But they never... Yeah, they never did anything with that. Like, actually add crimson heads to the... Like, because those guys are freaking scary. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god, a zombie that runs, and he's got claws. Yeah, I mean, I will give I will give credit to Operation Raccoon City, at least after her time, do, uh, deliver enough damage to a zombie, but don't kill it, and it does turn into a crimson head, and they attack you. Mm -hmm. That I gotta give credit, I mean, Operation Raccoon City had great potential, it had a lot going for it, it's just, there was some execution that was, that had some issues. But, but yeah, it, that game was pure fan service to any legit RE lore fan. Heck, they even had the Jeep virus of uh, Vile resemble the movies with that twisted tube. Oh, I forgot there's crows in this room. Ah. So, no. Walking very slowly. <laughs> very slowly. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. I thought I was gonna run into that crimson head again. <laughs> oh my god, no, I don't need that. Don't need that shit in my life. Why is it quiet down here?
finally got the armor key. Oh, walk from the other side, lame. But yeah, Lindsay, remember that room I, I guided you to when you were playing Director's Cut? The room with the observation deck where you can see the helipad through the window? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, my fa that's my favorite room in the original game, and it sucks that it didn't carry over into the remake. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, that is a cool room. Oh, this is the piece. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's almost like a giving you a vision of the... Uh, it's like giving you a view of the finish line. You're mm -hmm. not... You, you can see the finish line, but you're not oh, there just yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, because the helipad uh, is the finish line. Right. Where's the music notes? That's the ink pad. Oh, down here. The, sh the shelf? By the, by the way, I've been grinding at this uh, Revelations 2. I may, as you know, I did finally get the uh, infinite rocket launcher. I, I basically unlocked it. I just needed to buy it with 100,000 uh, battle points. Mm -hmm. I did buy it, and I've been using it to kind of uh, grind my way through normal, hard, and very hard difficulties. So now I'm on the very hard difficulty because once I complete all the, uh, if I, once I complete very hard difficulty with um, with uh, with any rank, I can automatically uh, get infinite ammo for all weapons. Mm. Nice. Yeah, that way I can nice use reg bonus. Yeah, that way I can use regular weapons and uh, and not and not have to worry about using you know the um. The OP weapons, because OP weapons will take uh, will take the uh, will reduce your rank in your in your scores. So mm -hmm. therefore, I can't get like S rank throughout all levels if I'm using like rocket launcher or whatever. Mm -hmm. So with the, if I get the infinite ammo, then I can replay and with you know regular weapons with you know unlimited capacity, and therefore don't have to worry about screwing up my score. Oh my god, I forgot, like, in the in the RE1 remake, there's missing pages to the music book. So oh, yeah. Those. They've added so much to the remake, it's unbelievable. Like... Yeah. Alright, which rooms have I not been in? That opens. In fact, because I uh, completed um, what you call it, hard mode with the with the rocket launcher, I unlocked a weapon called the meat grinder. Do you know what the meat grinder is? What? Mm -mm. Nobody be alarmed. This is only a drill. <laughs> the meat grinder is the drill because the thing is there is a drill that's used for both as a tool and as a weapon in this game. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you see, the meat grinder can only be used as a weapon, but the power drill you acquire with Barry during one chapter to, like, drill holes through certain concrete uh, walls that are blocking your path. So now I have the meat grinder to grind my zombies to nothing, and, uh, now it's just a matter of, uh, un getting the unlimited ammo. I have played a little bit of raid mode, and it is fun. Have any of you tried raid mode in any of these games, or no? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like mercenaries mode, but they call it raid mode. Ah, I didn't mean to go down there. Back this way. This way. Is the name of my religion?
shoe fly, don't bother me. The fuck? Oh, what is this? Who's shaking at the fucking door? Oh shit. Mm. Oh, run, run, if run, you run, go run. around, I know. Yeah, if you move, if you go around the stairwell, the zombie will pop out of that door. Oh my god! Yep, he just popped through. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's locked. Oh my god! Seriously, I gotta get a fucking key. The old key. Shit. <gasps> There's a crimson head on the other side, isn't there? Oh, he hasn't gotten up yet. Jesus. Because I forgot there's a corpse out. Okay, so like, you know, on the first floor, the room you run into Rebecca, the medicine yeah. room? Originally, there's, yeah. There's a, there's a, well, in the remake, yeah, there's a dead body out there. So yeah. I was I'm like, oh, please don't get up yet. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Now I have to enter Whisper Lady mode. Ah, uh, fun, fun. Uh, where are my... Where's my nuts at? But I am enjoying all this talk about Resident Evil lore and all that. Oh my god, like, uh, I'm... The, the Resident Evil... Resident Evil is, like, I, it's one of my favorites, like... And it's only fitting that we're, we're talking about it because today is the day that Leon and Claire first arrived in Raccoon City. Hmm. Yesterday was the day the outbreak started. For Jill, at least. Oh. Oh, September 28th, Daylight. Yeah, I remember yeah. that line in the, yeah. uh, in the game. And then, yeah, and then the second day was the day Leon and Claire arrive, and the third day is when Jill finally woke up from her from her uh, virus nap and uh, cured and finally put an end to Nemesis before the city was nuked. Yeah, I was, I was trying to remember at what point, like, did Nemesis start before Resident Evil 2 and after Resident Evil 2? Yeah. I will admit it is a little confusing. That's but why, yeah, it, yeah. That's why I never understood. Because I was told it was supposed to Because initially, I was, when I, back when the game was first new, I was told it was set a full day before Leon and Claire. But then the destruction of the city kind of, you know, made me wonder, what, did I miss something or what? But then I realized that the moment that she goes, she gets infected, she passes out, and it's like out of it for two days. Yeah, like, um, that's why I never understood why Nemesis was considered RE3 and not Code mm -hmm. Veronica. Yeah. Code Veronica should be considered the official third well, here's the th Well, here's the thing. Code Veronica initially was Resident Evil 3. They had already intended. They had already planned on that being Resident Evil Three, but the thing is, they wanted to put, make it for the Sega Saturn, and that put a delay on the game. And because of that delay, they needed to put something out. So that's why they made this little short. Basically, Resident Evil Three Nemesis was meant to be like a short story telling what uh, more adventures in Raccoon City. Even though Claire's story of finding Chris was meant to take center stage. So even though there's no official number in it, Co Veronica really technically should be Resident Evil 4. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes well, sense. Well, 3, yes, initially 3, but now it really should be Resident Evil 4. Okay, what's 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 the more difficult BOW deal with, the hunter or the liquor? Oh, definitely the hunter, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, when I was talking about the meat grinder being like a drill, I'm actually using it like it's uh, Ash's chainsaw from Evil Dead. Mm. They really need to fix that game, damn it! Like, yeah. 
Like it's hopefully it's, it's ridiculous. The balance is ridiculous. It's totally yeah. freaking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But you want a real good res uh, Evil Dead game? Get the PlayStation One game, Evil Dead: Hail to the King. That oh, the mechanics yeah. in that mm -hmm. is actually Very like Resident similar. Evil. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a tough game. Like I tried playing I it and. I didn't I play it at all. I didn't even because I wasn't even evil an Evil Dead fan at the time. Mm -hmm. But I I just re, I just watched the whole game on play on YouTube, and right. I gotta admit I re, I really want to play that now. Yeah, well, I wish that some more PS One games were added to the store. That would be great. Well, I, even if they aren't, well, I can always try to see if it's on. Uh, I want the original Brigandine. I bought the sequel. It sucked. Mm. I, well, I'll just heard of that. for now. Into, and like anime garbage. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. For now, I'll just try to find Evil Dead: Hail to the King on uh, for PlayStation One on Amazon, and then yeah. and then stream it via my uh, Elgato and my PlayStation Two. Mm. Yeah, I played. Um, I I try. It's a hard game. Like I couldn't beat it. So I was like, but I did play that. And I also had um. I had Fistful of Boomstick, and I had, or was it, was it Fistful of Boomstick? Because there were two games on the PS2. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Fistful of Boomstick is a sequel to Hail to the King. Mm. But then, but then, uh, uh, I don't know if it's, Reg I think it's Regeneration. That's its yeah, own it's separate story. Yeah, Regeneration is its own story, separate from the previous two games. It basically acts as a, uh, it pretends that Army of Darkness did not happen and continues off of Evil Dead 2. Mm. So basically, if you didn't like the whole time traveling into medieval times in, at the end of Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, Regeneration tells what would have happened after that instead. Ah. Oh. Oh, I got first aid spray. Oh, it's a flash grenade. Oh, yeah, because the flash grenade, I think, acts as a, def yeah, a defensive item, I think. Yep. Oh, there's the bro- Finally, I got the broken shotgun! Use that the real shotgun. I just, I just got the, uh, the score of my, uh, latest episode of Revelations 2, com uh, after completing it. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Accuracy? For accuracy, I got an A. For uh, retries, I got an S. And for clear time, I got an S. What does that mm. spell? A-S-S. -S. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that how you can do that. Oh, yeah, I just got the store. But I actually one time took a picture and got all S's, which was awesome. Oh, that's cool. Zombies back upstairs. Okay, now here's a serious question. In terms of story, which which is your most favorite Resident Evil of all? Oh God. Um. In terms of story, that's a good one. Um. I'd want to say Survivor. Believe it or not. Mine is a toss-up. It is, on one hand, it is Resident Evil 2. On the yeah. other hand, on the other hand, it is Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely enjoyed the story to Code Veronica X a lot. So, like, yeah. it turns... You go to Antarctica at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like it, now when that? I... Oh, that oh, is Code that Veronica. Oh, that was Code Veronica, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that yeah. Best now, story. here's the thing. There is a difference between Code Veronica and Code Veronica X. Um, yeah. Code Veronica was the initial release. It had Alexia smack the bitch out of uh, Wesker, and uh, it, it it basically ended where Steve was dead. But Code Veronica X added some new stuff, and they made it where Wesker didn't take that shit from Alexia, and it, it implied Steve might have survived. Mm -hmm. So I prefer X over Classic in some respects. At least back in the day, they would go back and tweak something to fix it. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh, 
another fashion made cool. Oh, it is dark down here. Oh, what is that? Something's rattling. Oh, something's rattling. Something's gonna pop out. What's gonna pop? Oh my god, the, oh, the rattling sound. Like, what is that? Oh, what's that on the floor? God, it's been so long since I've played this game that I don't even remember, like, everything, like... Well, sometimes it's best to watch, uh, walkthroughs of it, so that way you can almost memorize- see it enough times to memorize it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I gotta get the chemicals for the plant room. Yeah, I gotta leave here. Oh, I gotta go grab the plant. chemicals, which means the room with the dogs. Oh, why is the window there? Are they gonna imply that more dogs are gonna bust through? What is that rattling sound? Death. <laughs> oh my god, it's getting, it's getting worse. What is that? Oh god. What the hell's gonna jump out? Oh yeah, there's the one room with the fucking zombie in the closet. I can't even remember if they changed it up in the remake. God, it's been so long. Uh, remember to read the diary first. Oh, there's a body. Oh, never mind, there's a dead body in here. So they're implying, oh yeah, it's probably going to be a crimson head. I don't know. Well, that's one of them, but there's an... But if, remember, read the diary first on the desk. Yeah, I hear- Oh, I wonder if that's what I was hearing down the hall was the zombie rattling the closet. Well, charge your weapon and sally for it. Yep. Tally-ho! Tally-ho, yep. motherfuckers! About to tally these hoes, yeah. <laughs> right, Mega Jin. <laughs> tally all of the hoes. Tally all of the hoes. <laughs> God, my cat is yodeling down the hall. Shut up, cat! Yodeling. <laughs> now there's these wisp spiders that are coming at me, trying to chomp at my feet, and I'm just meat grinding them to death. Jeez, that 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 invisible monster in that game would drive me insane. Oh, the glasps. Yeah, those yeah. these those guys are just fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. For real. Yeah, cuz I mean like you got to you need Natalia to try and see them and then you got to try and relocate them as berries so yep. that way you can get a good shot. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they fly doesn't help. Yep. Yeah, but you know what I did manage to do the, last night? When I was replaying the the section where Claire and Moira find those glasps, but they uh, they don't have uh, you know Natalia's sight, they have to like rely on their surroundings. Yeah. I you know what I did, which was not easy to do. Mm. I managed to kill one of those glasps with a combat knife, which you know is not mm. easy because you know one hit it, if they if you run right into them, they'll they'll one hit kill you. But you actually, it actually can be done. It turns out you gotta get the one uh, smoke bomb that you will find before you run into them, throw it at them, and then maneuver around them, and then just slash them from the sides. Mm. And it and it worked like a charm. God, it's amazing that the RE1 remake was from 2002, and the graphics on this game are still, like, top-notch. I mean, the details that were put into this game is just out of this world. Swallow this. <laughs> I just said that to a zombie before hit blasting him with a shotgun. Swallow <laughs> yourself! Swallow yourself!
Swallow this. Swallow <laughs> this. I love that. Come, come uh, back. Like one of my I mean, favorite, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Come get some is good, but uh -huh. I prefer that. I prefer yeah, swallow this. Swallow this. <laughs> That's more badass. Oh, by the way, you know what I've been, uh, you know what I've been uh, doing lately? I've been uh, re-watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 80s cartoon. I need to watch that. Yeah, I actually have, like, most of the seasons on DVD. But, yeah, I've been re-watching them just for fun. Mm. Still on the first season right now. There's, like, so much stuff I have to watch, it's not even funny. Yeah, my stepdad and I finally got through the first season of Evil Dead, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Yeah, I'm just a... working my way through the second season. Yeah, I mean, I already grind, I already ground, grinded, binge watched my vert way through it. But yeah, with uh, my stepdad, he, we still have, we only got through season one. Oh my god, the the fucking one-liners in, in the second season has just got me like dying. This area. Oh, I got some additional ammo and shit. Good. Hmm. Oh, good old inventory management. How I miss it. You know, I will give credit to uh, to Resident Evil 4 for the uh, the way they have the store, the inventory system in that game, with giving you more inventory space and stuff. Yeah. Now I do like how they kind of made it where certain characters had it easier than others. Yeah. Because. Uh, you know, Jill, she may have an uh, easier chance of accessing doors and such, but uh, and, and but she couldn't slots. take much, but she couldn't take as much damage. Yeah. Whereas Chris, yeah, he would have a harder time trying to access areas, and uh, and his limited but, in inventory space. But he can take more damage. He was strong enough to take more damage. Mm -hmm. Which is why um. I like that, you know, you have these, you know, drawbacks with characters. Yeah. That's why I always preferred to play as Chris at first, because it's like, yeah, it's a pain in the ass he has, like, six slots as opposed to Jill, and he doesn't get the bazooka. But, you know, he takes damage like a beast. When he had Jill, like, when I was playing through Jill's playthrough in the original game, I can't tell you how many green herbs I've gone through. Hmm, Yeah. I'm just like, it's a good thing there was a whole bunch of green herbs scattered throughout the mansion because, yeah, like, I would have been dead. Meanwhile, I didn't have, I didn't have to use many herbs with, uh, with Chris. And you kind of need all those herbs, because if you want to try and do the speed run uh, with no first aid sprays, you're going to need all the freaking herbs you can get. Yep. Indeed. Another fucking small key. I'm going to need to open that door. Great. Did I grab all the small keys? I can't remember. Hmm. Oh my lord, wrong way. And you know what the worst part is about these invisible enemies in Revelations 2? Hmm. 
sometimes when you're playing as Natalia and Barry, Natalia is the girl that can see the monsters through the walls, through their auras. Mm -hmm. Um... There's a time where you're in this one area, you think you've got all the invisible enemies dead, but then after you get close to a, to a certain objective or do a certain task, two or, th or three more spawn in. And then you're like, where the hell are they? they were, there, was, there weren't any a moment ago. the same. I can't even remember. Now you've played Revelations 2, right? Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, but yeah, I've played it. Well, right now I'm at the part where Barry and Natalia have to get have to get through the sluice. Do you know what the sluice is? Mm -mm. Oh, that's the part where um, what you call it? They uh, uh, it's a long tunnel. It's like an underground uh, sewer. Mm -hmm. Basically, there were these gates, these four gates keeping water from getting down to a certain area, but it's really meant to keep the zombies and monsters out. So yeah, it's like I'm trying to open the gates as Natalia while also being mindful that there might be enemies mm -hmm. as Barry. Bracelet. Necklace. Oh yeah, they changed the picture riddle in them. In the yeah, they did change it. Yeah, yeah, they did change a few of those riddles. Yeah, because in the uh, original RE1 remake, it was like the pictures were based off of age, because it yeah. went from like you know, a baby to old man, and then to death was like the final picture. Uh huh. This one, it looks like I'm guessing it's like I'm gonna have to match like the colors of the stained glass with like the uh the jewelry in the main picture can't remember how that's done and just like in the original i'm gonna have to get it in the right order or the crows are gonna peck at me Yeah, I sincerely hope that they do add the original 2 and Nemesis and, you know, all the other older games to the PS Store, because I would love to stream that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have Code Veronica in 4. Why can't we get mm -hmm. the all the originals? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, I still have my original copy of uh, Resident Evil Survivor. The only Resident Evil game that I haven't played is File 2. Is Outbreak File 2. That's it. All the other games I've played and beaten most of them, except 4. I have not beaten 4. Instead, I watched my sister beat the game. I did beat uh, 4 back on the PlayStation 2. It's just... Um... Whatchamacallit, I, uh, 
I didn't get I I I I have to beat the uh, there was one thing I did not unlock yet that I wanted to unlock beat the game on professional mode and in order to, and doing doing that I would end up getting the um the laser cannon and I want that laser cannon but I know that professional mode will be freaking difficult Oh, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Sort of. Alright. So okay, I will be right back. Okay. Green crown, purple necklace, orange bracelet. No, definitely don't press that. Orange brace. Right? Okay, I'm back. Cool. All right, so bracelet set to the right color. Glass needs to be green. Yep. Yep. Right, yay! Ah, there's one of the masks. Another door that requires an old key, yay. Oh dear, there's a body there. I better burn it.
gotcha. This puzzle's Oh yeah, I think I'm finally about to beat Rebecca. You. Chris Redfield, Alpha Team. We're here to rescue you. Richard, what the hell happened to you? Chris, this place. Get your team out of here. Demons everywhere. Don't talk. He seems to have been bitten by a poisonous snake, but the size of the bite mark is huge. It's not just any ordinary Finally. snake. <laughs> Take my word for it. He needs serum. I left it in another room. I'll go get it. Please hurry. Hold on. I'll be back. Ah, whoa, 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 that was close. <sighs> Shit. I was like, I heard that zombie, and I was like, which corner is he around? And I was running, I shouldn't have run. That was stupid of me. <laughs> you should have seen that some of the times me and my dad ev evaded zombies in the original games. It was like, 
there was this one room where there was like zombies uh, scattered about. You had to like, you know, try to wib wibbly wob your zigzag your way around them to avoid getting grabbed and getting out. And then, you know what my dad would always say? He would do his hand doing like a plain str uh, straight forward and go whoosh. <laughs> That's funny. And it's technically true. I've had moments like that myself. In fact, in Code Veronica, do you know? Remember when Chris gets to the Antarctic facility and when he has mm -hmm. to get that one valve? Uh, it's in a room littered with zombies, both on top of and half buried underneath the ice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the moment he gets it, the moment he's trying to walk away, the zombies break out of the ice and start marching toward him. Well, one time I I took like one back step and then turned and then I zigzagged my way through, did not get grabbed even once. And I was like my dad. I was like, whoosh. Because <laughs> that's the thing. If you can like pull a zigzag around zombies and not get grabbed once, even when they're like right on top of you, then mm -hmm. you're that damn good. Mm hmm I tried to do it again like a year or so ago when I tried Co Veronica for the first time in a while. Sadly, I did get grabbed. But still, the fact that I did it one time, I just, it sucks I didn't record it that time because back then I wasn't streaming. Why did I do that? I could have gone down the other corridor. Thank goodness that zombie didn't grab me. I do with the serum then?
Oh my god, I forgot there was a zombie there. Is this shit bugged out or something? What the fuck? What? Uh, what what's going on? Nothing. Uh, oh, your, game, your game's acting uh, up? Yeah, it's like World Congress. That's great. Let me out. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of had problems with the game a few days ago. Like, Typical that World Congress is the reason that your game has problems. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. See what I did there? Shit, I gotta like, I gotta freaking torch that body. Wait, there's a fucking zombie there? Ah, oh, my god. I can't catch a break. Jesus. Maybe you should cut that zombie a break. Break his head, or his leg, or his feet. Or even his hand. I'm gonna have to use those two. Ah, uh, at least I still have some mixed herbs. I can finally grab those music notes too. Cool. Why the hell did they take away my weapons of mass destruction? I haven't even built any. To look at <laughs> they these took other away your bat. What the? Shady. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even made any, and I can't return to the game. Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that kind of reminds me of oh, the. Oh, uh... says we're not friends. That kind of reminds me. Hey, that kind of reminds me of the Star Wars robot chicken uh, bit. Uh, was it where Bush thought he was a Jedi and, a, and he's like, "Huh? Was it all a dream, sir? We still haven't found any weapons of mass destruction. You have found weapons of mass destruction. Um, hi, sir. No, we haven't. You have. Uh, I don't know where this is going. Bring me a taco right away, sir." <laughs> It was just funny because he thought with the, with the force he could be that he can get whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything. Like, game's fucked. That's such bullshit.
do they want me to do? Yeah, I've had that problem happen to me before too. Where it's like I couldn't. I it says return the game. I did everything. Mm hmm. Dude, come on. I've been playing this for three hours, really? <laughs> Maybe Congress is the end of the game. No. I'm just No, it's, it's, it, it's not, um, because throughout the game there's, like, congressional sessions and stuff where you have to vote on crap. I'm, j I'm just spitballing here. Well, that's how I stopped playing that game. Oh, I'm gonna start a new game. I don't give a shit what the fuck's name. I could go through this door again. Are you fucking kidding me? I forgot there were zombies that break through this damn door. Fuck. Uh. Oh, yeah. You expect me to run past these guys? Seriously? Jesus. I didn't ask for this. Why are you torturing me like this? <laughs> this is like one of my favorite parts of that movie. I saw uh, I have plenty of handgun ammo, so all I have to do is just take out these zombies. Good, he won't be coming back. Past that's I think I can run past. 
Run. Oh no! Oh, there's two. Seriously? Jesus! Get off me! Get out my my pumpkin blonde. All right, be right back. Got a pee. Lindsay's got that pumpkin white bitch juice. By the way, I am planning on a custom type of uh, costume for Halloween this year, so. Uh, I'll try to do a little cosplay. Kinda. I'm gonna see if I can make it work. You could get yourself a white ponytail and go as uh, Terry Silver and just yell at people. <laughs> Tempting. Commit random Very assaults. Tempting. Okay, I finally got the shotgun. You know that fireplace in that room with the, the shotgun trap? Mm -hmm. Um... I read a fanfic that actually made it to where if some if like one person left the room but the other got stuck behind that giant uh fallen ceiling, mm -hmm. that fireplace place would lead up to the attic so they can technically have a way out. Mm. Which kind of makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. You kind of need something to f uh, a secondary means to get out of there in case that trap is stuck like that, right? right. Don't kill me, please, don't kill me. Oh. oh, you idiot. Turn around. There we go. Holy fuck. Who just where I needed to go. It was a close call.
Oh my god! I was not expecting that. Jesus! I swear, it seems like they put the frickin' zombie in certain spots on the second floor. You know, above the dining hall. Yeah. Jesus Christ! The sound design in this is just incredible. It's like you could hear like the zombie steps, like in surround sounds, like from your headphones. It's, it's crazy. canteen while I'm at it.
Oh yeah, something that I noticed like in the um, Resident Evil remake, or the RE1 remake, shall I say. The, uh, like how Chris gets the small key and Jill uses the lockpick. Like in the original game, it's desks that you w unlock with the lockpick mm -hmm. or the small key, but in the remake, it's doors. Yeah. By the way, you remember how I told you there's a fan remake of the uh, original Resident Evil, but with the uh, the mm. um, RE Engine style mm -hmm. remake, mm -hmm. and it's over the over shoulder, the shoulder. Mm -hmm. and it also has scenes of like the RPD before it got barricaded and all that, where you can interact with mm -hmm. NPC cops like Kevin Ryman and such. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some forced exploration while trying to find the dead teammates and all that mm. with the chopper and everything. Oh, but, um, that's cool. But yeah, um, from the makers of that fan game, mm. they're also doing a fan, a fan remake of uh, the original uh, Director's Cut 96 edition with, oh. it, with HD and 3D remodeling. Basically, oh, cool. full on, full on bright colors of the rooms, but with you know 3D pixels. Oh, cool. Mhm. Mm That's gonna be cool. Mhm. Mm I like. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if you're familiar with the channel Residents of Evil. Yes, Basically, I am. I've, I've seen their yeah. stuff. Yeah, if you look up their latest one, Resident Evil '96 edition, mm -hmm. that's a uh, that's the one I just mentioned. Yeah, okay. look it up. You may like it. I don't know how you'd be able to play these fan remake games unless you ha are able to play them on your computer or not. But, yeah, they look, they look good. Cool. Believe me, if I had the, the talent to create a game like those, peop those people are doing, I'd have made some Resident Evil Terminator games and even Terminator games of my own. I'm a bit, I'm an editor wizard, but I don't know if I'm a uh, game making wizard. I'd like to do like a fan remake of Resident Evil Survivor if I knew how to do that kind of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, there is someone who is doing a fan remake of um, uh, what is it? Um, Resident Evil Survivor, but it with the fixed camera angles in third person. Mm. You know, make it like the classic Resident Evil 2 and such. Oh, that's yes. cool. You okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm okay. Can't grieve forever. This is the Moonlight Sonata. Can you play? was that my interpretation is off a little let me practice for a while sure but don't get too carried away oh mm. i won't hey laz uh, you didn't really miss too much i don't think i haven't i haven't gotten to the good snake good yet if that's what you're asking good evening laszlo Uh, 
Oh yeah, I also noticed that they put the typewriter, they moved the typewriter from the main hall in the original to the, to the, dining, the dining hall, hall. in yeah. the remake, yeah. That is interesting. Yeah, because it would be cool to explore the Spencer Mansion in the over-the-shoulder perspective with the RE Engine yeah. graphics, though. That would be so awesome. Let me ask you this. As great as, it, as, great as Lisa Trevor's addition to the remake was, mm -hmm. do you think she should have just been... She shouldn't have been at fixed points. She should have been stalking you throughout the mansion like Mr. X. Oh, yeah. That would have been cool. That would have been interesting. Yeah. By the way, on the topic of Mr. X, on, um, in regards to Resident Evil 4 remake, um... I you, you remember the get the character Bitoris Mendez? Chris, I think I got it. AKA the big cheese. Oh yeah, the guy the the, the first boss you fight in the in the yeah. uh the barn. Yeah. That guy, um, yeah. Believe it or not, he was initially modeled after Mr. X. And because oh. of that, because of that, when I think what I want in the remake is when Leon first lays eyes on the big cheese, I want him to immediately have a nightmare haunted PTSD right, style flashback of Mr. X because Mendez reminds yes. him of that. Mm. It would make sense, right? Mm -hmm. He sees Mendez and then all of a sudden he has a haunted look on his face and then he flashes back to big gray uh, skinned dude in a black trench coat where and, uh, mm -hmm. chasing him. That'd be an interesting little Easter egg to add. Well, yeah, it's a re call back to the fact that it was initially he was initially modeled after Mr. X, and it also references that Leon is still struggling getting over the Raccoon City incident. Mm. Ah, I've encountered Trevor's diary. Let's read this, shall we, chat? November twenty fourth, nineteen sixty seven. Eleven days have passed since arriving on this estate. How did I end up like this? A guy in a lab coat brought me a, how do you pronounce, M-E-A-G-R-E, -E, Miagra? Uh, me meager, meager. Meager, meager, oh, meager, God, I'm so, I'm so fucking high, I haven't used, heard that word in ages. A meager plate of food and said, sorry to put you through this, but it's for security reasons. That's when it hit me, it all makes sense now. There are only two people that know the secret of this mansion, Sir Spencer and myself. If they kill me, Sir Spencer will be the only person that knows the secret. But for what purpose? It doesn't matter now. It's too dangerous here. My family, I hope they are all right. I've decided to escape. Jessica, Lisa, I, I pray for your safety. November 26th, 1967. God dang, this was a long time ago. How could I be so careless? I've lost my what was favorite. The year? 1967. Damn. Yeah, right? I was just like, jeez, that was like, if, if we're going by Resident Evil timeline, that was what, 30 years ago? What the? Anyway. Oh, damn it. How could I be so careless? Oh, I lost my favorite shit. lighter. That was just bullshit one Jessica game. gave me for my birthday. Now it's going to be that much harder to escape this dark place. November 13th, the date when my fate was sealed. My aunt was hospitalized just three days before that. Jessica and Lisa said they were going to visit her. I wish I could be there with them. But wait, even as I'm writing, my memory is coming back to me more vividly. Just before I passed out, I remember the men in the lab coat said something like, Most likely your family is already. I pray for their safety. November 27th, 1967. Somehow I managed to get out of that room. But getting out of this mansion won't be as easy. I have to get past all the booby traps. Tiger eyes, gold emblem. I have to try and remember for my own sake. Wait, was it there was a Dr. Trevor? So it's like George Tre Trevor. So, so you have Trevor so Trevor and Spencer knew of Ah oh god. Secret. Okay, um oh, George like the Trevor virus and stuff that they were working Trevor on. Trevor is the last 
I, the Trevor is the last name of the of the architect who designed the mansion. is going to be the armor. Long hand is going to be the helmet. That's what I think. <laughs> Laz. What are you going to do, bro stabby? Last words of bad stab to death. <laughs> well, one got stabbed in the head. The other guy got stabbed in the chest. Really eerie picture. Six o'clock.
apparently my I wasted too much time on a damn chest when I should have just moved. Damn timer ran out and I got blown up with the with the tower. That sucks. I know. Not that I'm concerned with the score of my my of my rating. I'm just trying to beat the thing. If you just beat the scenario on the hardest difficulty, then that's uh that's how you unlock all your uh, good your, the infinite ammo. One thing I do kind of get bummed over with the remake, not only is it the uh, the fact that the uh, my favorite room is not in it, but most of the colors are muted. It's got that yeah. dark, bland beige, brown and black. It's just, where's all the color that made the, the original so vibrant? Oh, I agree. That's one thing that kind of, that, that I think was a downside to the RE1 remake is that in the original, yeah, the colors of the mansion kind of popped. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, the, uh, the sec- after, If you go to the, uh, the dining hall's second floor, and then you go through the door leading to that stairwell, mm -hmm. it's like- It's like a- a greenish- Yeah! Uh, yeah! With red, red lines around it. I always liked that room because of, yeah, how the- how the walls were. I thought it was just a really fascinating design. Yeah. Not to mention the blue double doors actually look like blue double doors, whereas in the remake they're just common double doors, but you don't see much of the blue on them. Yeah, that's true, Laz. You do got the high-res pictures of the paintings, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and being able to see them is crucial for solving a lot of the puzzles. Oh, we get to read the Keeper's Diary again, but I think they changed the, uh, I think they changed it up a bit. Well, yeah, like I said, l read the diary before you look in the closet. Right. Let's see. May 9th, 1998. Played poker tonight with Scott and uh, Elias from Security, or Elias, whatever you want to say. And Steve from Research. Steve was the big winner, but I think he was cheating, scumbag. May 10th, 1998. One of the higher-ups assigned me to take care of the new creature. It looks like a skinned gorilla. Feeding instructions were to give it live animals. When I threw in a pig, the creature seemed to play with it, tearing off the yeah. pig's legs and pulling out the guts before wow. it actually started yeah, I eating. Th I, think, I think that was the hunters. Yep. It, it, it explains, yep. Like, especially the description of them. Oh, so that was kind of like foreshadowing about what you were going to run into later on oh. in the game. Mm -hmm. Was that Keeper's Diary? May 11th, 1998. At around 5 a.m., Scott woke me up. Scared the shit out of me, too. He was wearing a protective suit. He handed me another one and told me to put it on. Said there'd been an accident in the basement lab. We all know where that is. 
Uh -huh. I just I just knew something like this would happen. Those bastards in research never sleep, even on holiday. Mm. May twelfth, nineteen ninety eight. I've been wearing the damn spacesuit since yesterday. My skin's getting grimy and feels itchy all over. The goddamn dogs have been looking at me funny. So I decided not to feed them today. Screw them. Holy shit! This keeper was really even more hardcore than the original. Mm-hmm. May 13th, 1998, when it went to the infirmary because my back is all swollen and feels itchy, they put a big bandage on it and told me I didn't need to wear the suit anymore. All I want to do is sleep. May 14th, 1998. Found another big blister on my foot this morning. I ended up dragging my foot all the way to the dog's pen. They were quiet all day, which is weird. Then I realized some of them had escaped. Maybe this is their way of getting back at me for not feeding them the last three days. If anybody finds out, I'll have my head handed to me. Yeah, well fucking deserved, too, not feeding the fucking dogs. Animal cruelty, butch. Well, remember, they didn't care if they got fit. I don't know even know yep. why. Oh. I don't even know why they're, why they're bothering with feeding and such. Because, I mean, they were planning to mutate them anyway, weren't they? It certainly seemed like, yeah. I mean, they were being they were being experimented upon, so I guess... Or was it you the know. guard dogs were just meant to guard the place and not actually be mutated? Mm, I don't know, but that's a good question. I mean, I think part, I think it's clear that you know, like all the wolves that were in the area around Hargalay Mountains, that they were. I'm sure they were capturing those wolves and experimenting on them, uh -huh. which would explain yeah. all the zombified dogs or wolves or mm -hmm. well, I guess they're more dogs than anything. Well, I know this, the dogs themselves, like the, they were supposed to be, I think, our dogs, but then, of course, they ended up getting infected because, uh, remember, the the game establishes that they were mutated due to the T-virus being leaked into the water supply. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, and then, in, oh, right, yeah, because I know in the second game, the, well, in the second game, the G virus got out, and the rats carried the disease throughout the, uh, yeah. the city. Yeah, I remember Jill saying that. So the rats were the carriers of the disease. Well, actually, that was uh, Claire well, both and Ada. Of, well, Claire. Oh, sorry. I meant. Yeah, I meant to say Claire, not Jill. Ugh. That's okay. Stuck on, stuck on Resident Evil One. Uh huh. All right. Let's see. May 16th, 1998. Rumors going around that a researcher who tried to escape the estate last night was shot. My entire body feels hot and itchy and I'm sweating all the time now. I scratched the swelling on my arm and a piece of rotten flesh just dropped off. What the hell's happening to me? Yeah, I'd, I'd be a little freaked out by that too. Like, oh, my skin is rotting and falling off. What the hell's going on? Oh, you just got infected with the T-virus, bitch. Now you're gonna die. Not that he'd know about what it, what that even is. Mm -hmm. See, and even though he was a bit of an asshole, this keeper had no idea really what he was involved in. Uh, he, well, yeah, I mean, because I'm sure that everyone that had access to the lab and shit, obviously he wasn't gonna have access to any information at all. He's just the keeper. Because obviously the shit that they were doing down there was all classified. Here we go, May 19th, 1998, fever gone but itchy, today hungry and eating and eat doggy food. Ah, <laughs> May 21st, 1998. That it... doesn't sound like he's regressing quickly yeah, at all. Yeah, no, totally not, not at all. He's fine, he's gonna <laughs> it's be fine. fine. He's, he's fine, he's gonna be perfect, good. he's gonna be perfectly fine, guys. It's perfectly good. fine, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> May 21st, 1998. Itchy, itchy Scott came, ugly face, <laughs> so killed him. Tasty! <laughs> oh my god. Four, and then just slash, slash. Itchy. Tasty. Just, just but a sweat flesh wound, m'lady. <laughs> just but a scratch. It's just but a scratch. 
is a flesh wound. Does he open? I'm waiting for one. Oh, I have a feeling that the. Oh no, I think I know what's gonna happen. Why did I do that? I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, aren't I? Is I was like thinking there was the dead body on the floor. I was like thinking, oh, just watch. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go down the corridor, and he's gonna break through the fucking door. Thank God that didn't happen. Hmm. Oh yeah, I should grab that blue gem and put it away. Oh my god, a fucking crimson head. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. I was not expecting that. Oh my god. These fucking crimson heads. Yeah, they can be scary. Oh. Like, I thought, oh, I've got a canister of kerosene. I forgot there's a dead body in that room. But no, it already it already turned into a crimson head. I'm like, god fucking damn it. Yes, I will discard that key. This fucking crimson head. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't catch me. like for real worst possible halfway to run into a crimson head I know right yeah, it's just funny you'll just go through a door and then all of a sudden a crimson head will be running at you like what the fuck well you also got to remember which rooms the crimson heads are in <laughs> right yes and you're trying to remember like okay which areas did I burn the bodies so because I don't have to worry about that and then which ones, like, did I leave the butt? Because those are going to be the dangerous areas. Yeah, because that's the thing. You're limited on how much uh, kerosene they give you. I could still use those herbs in that one area, I think. So I'm going to do that. So I don't want to end up using all my herbs. More use, that's fine. 
Hey, Fed. Hey, Fed. I agree. I'd like to see all that shit burn down, dude. All of it. Uh, Transhuman eugenics. All that shit. Just fucking globalist cunts. Eugenics, I didn't know Khan had anything to do with all that trans stuff. <laughs> uh-huh. See what I did there? prosthetic tits. <laughs> what? <laughs> prosthetic tits? <laughs> no, 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 I said, I said eugenics. As in the eugenics uh, wars that uh -huh. made Khan Union sing who he is. It's true. <laughs> I'm gonna have to kill that fucking crimson head at some point, cause, and, cause hmm. that's the area I need to go through to get to the snake. That's what she said. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I gotta pee. I'll be right back. You know what, Fred, I'm starting to think that maybe Resident Evil was a simulator for the shit that was about to come. Because there's just certain things that's happening in this world that I'm just like, why is it mirroring Resident Evil? Well, many things mirror art right now in the world right now are mirroring Demolition Man. Uh, that, uh, I still need to see that movie. Oh, it is great. You gotta see it. That's an uh, awesome I, movie. I know. I, it's like... I think I need to move that to my priority list. I need to make it like a priority list of like stuff. It's a fun ass there. movie. You'll really enjoy yourself. Mm. It's action, fun, and uh, depth. Mm. Believe it or not, there is one f extra fight between Spartan and Phoenix that got cut from the f from the final film. Remember when they were in the uh, the underground subterranean tunnels, and uh, Simon Phoenix was on yeah. top of this scaffolding bridge, and then uh, he was going to take a shot down at Spartan, only for um, Edgar Friendly to shoot to to shoot down the bridge. Well, apparently Spartan was supposed to climb up to that bridge. There was supposed to be another fisticuffs between them, and then Friendly uh, did, would uh, shoot the bridge. Apparently, that was where the conversation of uh, Phoenix saying he had already killed the, pa the, <laughs> pass the passengers from the beginning. That's why it was it was lifted from that and then put into the driving sequence. He's saying, okay. What? Yeah, Wesley <laughs> Snipes, Lindsay. He's just fucking so good in this movie. Mm, I, oh, yeah. yeah I he's got it. bleach blonde hair. He's in his prime, mm. and he's like kung fu. These Brady Bunch future fucking... Uh, in the future, there's no music. Uh -huh. It's just jingles from commercials. Old commercials. Every, everything that we think is cool is fucking contraband, basically. Well, so I heard about... Edgar, like, it Friendly, like... Edgar Friendly lives in the sewers with his group of people, and he's Dennis Leary. 
right? Uh, so, uh-huh. then, so then Spartan gets unfrozen to take on Simon Phoenix, who's like, you know, basically Nino Brown dropped into a, a utopian future with uh, extra skills and kung fu. And uh, <laughs> so then uh, Rob Schneider's one of the cops in the fucking police station. You got fucking uh, a police chief that looks like Colonel Clink and he's an idiot. And you got, <laughs> and you got uh, Sandra Bullock, young and cute, being fucking, you know, a cool sidekick. Uh-huh. Great movie. Just all around. It was just really good movies. Oh, Who's and that the... old black guy who was in Night at the Museum? He's in the shit, too. Old black guy? And not, guy? To mention, not to mention the Sega Genesis video game based on the, the movie really is that. good, too. Oh, I did. It was tough as shit, but it was fun. I swear, if you look up the Demolition Man Sega Genesis game on YouTube, actually, there, there are two versions, the Sega Genesis version and the Sega CD version, two different, completely different versions, and yet so cool in their own right. See, Fed, I was thinking that, like, Umbrella, or I was thinking, like, Big Pharma, like, Pfizer and Moderna would be more like Umbrella as opposed to, like, BlackRock slash Vanguard. Because I don't think... I'm trying to... Because it's like Umbrella just mainly dealt with like pharmaceuticals and just medical experimentation and stuff like that. Yeah, here's the thing. I don't... I understand how after Umbrella, even though they've said they're like... They fell, their legacy lived on with bioterrorists. But, and I think that's an interesting way, realistic way of going about it, but still, it's like, you killed off Umbrella so abruptly without at least tr telling how it fell. Mm -hmm. So that's, therein lies the problem, in my opinion. Oh god, yeah, we need a closure on how, because I, I refuse to accept that they just went bankrupt. It's like, no, I think there was a lot of other, I mean, obviously... I, there's a lot of controversies that came out that Umbrella wanted to put a tight lid on that got out to the press and shit, you know? As I remember, John said to Ada, you know, if I die, you know, you get my story out to the press, you know? Yeah, but he didn't know that Ada was a spy, so... Yep, that too. Whew, yeah, because Ada was another one, like, just cut double-crossed a lot of people. And then it's like you have so Then Wesker was playing both sides, too. Oh, Black Rock well, they, Vanguard on control. Well, I think yeah, I think true. even in the in the original director's cut, Wesker was implying that yeah, what well, he did work for Umbrella, but he was already cutting ties, because I believe it was either in Resident Evil Zero or the retelling of Zero and One in Umbrella Chronicles. He said he it was time for him to abandon the sinking ship that was Umbrella the mm -hmm. moment that the T virus was leaked. Well, yeah, I mean we we all do that. It's like Wesker is only in it for himself, so he's obviously going to do whatever it takes to save his own ass. You know, and if, and if, uh, you know, try to cut as many ties that he had to Umbrella as much as possible. Yeah. Try to bury that all. But even he knew he might, it might be difficult doing that in his human form, and that's why Birkin gave him that little special serum for him to inject himself with before he got impaled by the tyrant. Yeah, that would explain it, because I remember thinking there that's kind of a conundrum in the story, or, you know, like, it, like it doesn't make sense how Wesker survives Jill's scenario, but in Chris's scenario, he gets killed by the tyrant. That, and then he comes back in Code Veronica, and I'm just like, wait a minute, dude, didn't you, did, what was the true canon ending in the first game? But I'm glad that they're... Yeah trying to fix some of that stuff. And that's one of the things I loved about Code Veronica, because originally Wesker was just a one-off villain in the first game, and then Code Veronica comes along and brings him back, but he's mm -hmm. worse than before. Yes. And that was what was great about it. That's why Code Veronica and Code Veronica X are, are really necessary.
<laughs> Plus, a Code Veronica remake would be good a good way to introduce a new young Chris and young Wesker. Oh, that door is a fiction. Because they, they gave us a new young Jill and a new young Claire, but they but we needed a new young Chris and Wesker mm -hmm. for everything else. I think I'm forgetting some small keys because I know there's another door I need to open with a small key. Fed. Nah, my game bugged out and I restarted. this uh I still think it's funny that Alexander the Great never got to see Alexandria. Uh, and Mikey never got to see Paris. Alright, so if I'm if I'm guessing this correctly, the stat the stones that are the shield and the sword should remain outward, while the other two should remain inward. For real, that's a lot of fucking. <laughs> Hi, I held out. Now I could join the, the big order instead of the owl people. The court of owls? That's what I call them. I know, for real. <laughs> but, but bitch, this ain't Batman. <laughs> bitch, this we're, ain't we're Batman. This in this bitch. <laughs> Can I have a real cult, please? Maybe they have a character named Bruce Vane. Bruce Vane. Can I please get a can I please get a cult I could take seriously? 
<laughs> That's funny, lads. What are mystery bab? Do I even ask, Fed? Mystery Babylon School Fraternities. I hope I haven't been cursed. <laughs> How oh, does this thing? Yes, I know there's something in the way. Could be an intelligence agency. Cool. Oh, I had a spy at one of my uh, cities yesterday, and so and so far all of my spy missions had been successful. How the fuck? Okay, let's try this again. The shield should be out. So then. Here goes nothing. That didn't work. Damn it. fun with that fed <laughs> ah shit oh yeah we have to go no what you doing now oh he says bite stream it a bit got some mouth poop to dispose of youtube seems like an appropriate toilet <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny actually that is pretty fucking funny i mean it's pretty true i must say So does Twitter. Just to see if I if if I'm understanding the riddle correctly. I miss it in the original. It was just a simple puzzle where you just 
pushed the knight statues over the grates, made sure they covered the grates before pushing the button. Mm -hmm. No, in the remake, they had to make it fucking hell on how to solve it. Well, there is a pattern. You just got to memorize it. A pattern. Well, because I'm thinking it, it obviously has something to do with the pictures on the wall and the okay, way they're okay. positioned. Okay, if you step back toward the main pedestal for a second. I'm waiting for the live feed to catch up. Uh. Okay, um... First, try the shield. So push the shield? Yeah. No, 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 not the center. The, 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 the knight with the shield. Uh, me a diamond mine, bitch. Well, because the knight with the shield's right there. Yeah, yeah, push the knight with the shield in first. Okay. So the sword guy goes back into the wall. Yeah, so... Okay, try the axe man. Is it that all of them have to be pushed back into the wall somehow? Yeah. Okay, now try the the one you didn't push, the one on the uh, opposite corner of the uh, the axe, not the shield. Oh, this guy up here, the guy across yeah. the sword. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so... then. Okay. And then the shield. Oh, wait, wait. Actually, no, no, no. Axe again, axe again, axe again. Axe again? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You want to axe me a few questions? Yeah, just like the Ripper from Jack Slater 4, 3. Okay, now nothing moved there. So... Okay, then the shield. There we go. How did you figure that out? I memorized it. Oh my lord, it's been so long since I've played this game. I was yeah, yeah, like... you gotta know which ones get, uh, will be pushed back out after, if you push them in. Right, uh... Good pulling it out of your ass, Mega Jetty. That was, that's pretty fucking impressive. Well, I yeah, played it enough real. times. I I admit I don't remember the exact pattern ex precisely. You just did. But but I remembered the uh, the the. <laughs> I've remembered how to solve the puzzle. Uh, it's like I played the RE1 remake numerous times and numerous like and I completely forgot about these dang puzzles. But the original it was it was super freaking easy. I got a box. What's in this box? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's trying to awaken me. Yes, I will press the switch. Nothing? Oh, here we go. Oh, there's the other mask. What the fuck? Who's attacking my cap? Dude, why can't I Sweden? Sweet is Sweden attacking you? Apparently. Damn Swedes. Fuck. Yeah, what the fuck, Sweden? <laughs> I haven't even met you. <laughs> I thought Sweden was supposed to be neutral. Uh, yeah, like, apparently not. Mm, apparently not, <laughs> indeed. Should have known that you couldn't trust those neutrals.
Fuck this. I'm starting over. I didn't play this for a fucking hour and a half just to have Sweden walk into my character capital from off the fucking map and take it over in one shot. Wow. What that's the fuck? Harsh. That is what? fucked up. I thought. I don't. I mean, I've seen my dad play one of the old Civilization games on PlayStation. I don't recall it being that easy to die and lose. Yeah, this, I'm sorry, Jesse, but I think your Civilization game has some problems. The <laughs> uh, game's been buggy. It's buggy, it's screwing you over, it's everything except winning. Oh god, it's we got to the point of the stream where I'm just like, Lindsay's so high, it's like she forgot what the fuck she's doing at this game. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, I was gonna put the masks down here. Get those out of my inventory. What 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 two different uh, what or what different factions do you start off as? Like twenty of them. Oh, how many? Get can you list them? Oh, I just went to the next screen, but like I've been using Canada. There's two different versions of Roosevelt for America. Huh. There's France, England, Australia. What kinds of people? I see London, I see France, I see someone's underpants. Seems a little arrogant to say that a Sphinx is a unique improvement you can make. Like, they keep putting them up anywhere. It's it was like the world's biggest carved statue forever, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Till uh, the modern age. More like until uh, Aladdin and Jasmine accidentally screwed it up with their magic carpet ride. The city song, yeah. <laughs> Their music sucks. Yeah, it is a pretty cool creep me at it's a pretty creepy atmosphere in the dungeon. It's designed that way. And I was and I was actually impressed with that little bit. That's yeah. another thing too. The original mansion did not have a. Uh, <coughs> it didn't have a uh, what you call it. BDSM dungeon. <laughs> no, no, well, not, not only not only that, it did not have that door on the top of the central stairwell of the main oh, hall. Oh. Mm -hmm, yeah, your dungeons mm -hmm. aren't supposed to have too many doors. You don't want them getting out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> But at least they got, like, the chains and shit down in the dungeon. 
Do you remember, uh, what was it, Robin Hood Men in Tights with the people chained up in the fucking... Oh my god, that's another one I haven't seen. I still... <coughs> I, I, I remember bits and pe like, bits and pieces of, of Men in Tights. Um, I gotta see that all the way through again because I've mo my favorite Robin Hood has always been uh, Prince of Thieves. Yeah, well, that's the mm -hmm. classic one. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the go to mm -hmm. Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. Kevin Costner, man. Even though Kevin Costner doesn't use an English accent, <laughs> he doesn't know how to do that, so why would you bother? <laughs> like, look, I'm not gonna sound English. Why would I? Well, at least the Brits what? try to pull off an American accent if they're playing an American character. Uh, that's Amer it's like, yeah, we're American. Speak American. He's <laughs> like, this is an action movie. No one's going to look into it that deep. <laughs> Ain't that deep, fam. <laughs> Dogs crash through the window. Yay! Let's go! I'm waiting for it. I'm freaking waiting for it. Okay, are you gonna bust the door? Okay. That's... Oh! That was, that was a little strange. These dogs. Oh, I need that. I need that chemicals. Chemical. Oh, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. There we go. Damn it. Ho, 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 ho. Bye. Bye. Oh my god, those fucking dogs give me a heart attack. <sighs> yeah, that's the one jump scare that will get you in the first game. When they what? jump right through those windows. Oh my god, it's like... And the great thing about the remake is that, you know, when you go through the first time, you hear a smack against the glass, but you don't, they don't break uh -huh, through just uh -huh. yet. It's, it's basically playing with your expectations. Well, and then I just ran past the hall again, expecting the dogs to bust through the window, and I'm just like, why didn't they bust through the window? That's interesting. Oh, dude, Laszlo, for real. I mean, it just amazes me, like, the, the, the lighting and stuff in this game. Like, how, like, you see the... In the one room, you see the shadow of the chandelier, like, slightly creaking back and forth. Or, yeah, like, you see the lightning outside the window. It's, like, truly... Like, like I said, this game was from 2002. And the graphics are still just outstanding. 2002, but the original game came out in 96, so they had like, mm -hmm. um, four plus two, six years to improve. Can yep. you believe that? Six, six years, and they improved greatly. Bunches of oats, cinnamon toast crunch, mm. and chocolate 
frosted flakes with spooky marshmallows. Oh, that sounds good. Oh my god, Cinnamon Toast I Crunch admit, is my favorite. That is my favorite. I love Cinnamon cereal. Toast Crunch as well, but if there's one thing I like more than Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it's French Toast Crunch. Oh, my sister loved that cereal. Yeah. Even though, as a kid, I did Lego my Eggos on, on that one time. Oh, yeah, there was the Eggo cereal, or, like, well, actually, Waffle Crisp. That's what well, it was. Yeah, well, actually, when I say Lego my Eggos, that mm. means I threw up. Oh, that was, that was, <laughs> okay. Why does it mean that? Well, it basically, well, for one thing, I did like Lego Eggos back as a kid, but the thing is, I had, I, it, I don't know if it was the Eggo cereal or if it was French Toast Crunch. I was in Carbondale at my dad's one time. I ate it. I ate it for breakfast, but I think it was a hot summer day and it didn't mix well with the milk because when uh, my stepdad came to pick me up and bring I'm me back his friend, lactose intolerant. No, 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 no. I'm, I, I have, I'm good with milk. It's just I can't have too much of it now. But yeah, when I, um, he picked me up, drove me all the way back to Scranton. But by the time we got home. I was like, my I, I I had to open the window and and stick my head out the car door because I I, I legoed my egos as my stepdad calls it. So which one did you wash the car? Ah, uh, he did. That or he let the rain do the job. Uh, no, I ain't getting the puke off. You had to wash it while you were sick. Hey, triangular drastic Cheerios oat crunch almond. I don't think I've ever had that. I like a bunch of the the cereals. I like Frosted Flakes. I, I love like, Fro yeah, Frosted Flakes is good. I like I like Lucky oh, Charms. I, I got one for you guys. Um, I pick up my son. We go to the grocery store, right? Get some stuff. We come out, then over there, there's a Chinese place, and there's a cigarette shop. Mm -hmm. so I look, I, we go in. I get my cigarettes, and we order our food. And we're standing outside the Chinese place, and. All of a sudden, there's this car rolling backwards over in front of the stop and shop with the door open. I see this black dude running like a motherfucker trying to get into the driver's side of this car. And, uh, he failed. Um, the door was open. It swatted him down onto the ground and he <gasps> went under the door. Oh! And, and then I heard some white lady scream. And then I didn't know if it was her, her car or her, his car or her car. And then this other old black lady comes up, and apparently it was her car. But I'll, regardless of whose car it is, how the fuck do you get out of the car with it in reverse and being Ooh. on? <laughs> with, and not take your foot off the brake when you're getting out of the car? Like, how did you get out of the car with it in this situation where now I... these people have to chase this car? <laughs> we're just looking at each other like, is this a GTA leak? I was just thinking of two. I was just like, this sounds like something straight out of GTA. Like, out of fucking Los Santos. Like, what? This, the combination is stupid. I don't even know how they got the car in the reverse world without not being in the car. Mm, I don't know. Maybe, there were, maybe it had a... Uh... Maybe was it on an incline with any uh, with the with the break off? I don't know. I mean, dang! All I know is that I, I hope I, I hope I... that Kellogg. Br I think it's Kellogg that hey, does. Milton. That does uh, Apple Jacks, which is another one of my favorite cereals. They used, they had Apple Jacks with marshmallows like a few years ago. That shit was bomb. <laughs> oh no, I got you, Laszlo. I kind of felt the same way about Resident Evil 4 as well. That they ditched the old 2D background, 3D model style. But at the same time, they made the controls so much easier, because I tell you, that over-the-shoulder sh camera, yeah, is very, very helpful getting around, as opposed to tank controls. Shit, I'm sitting here thinking, how the hell have I managed to play this game and beat it? Because going back now, the controls are pretty complicated.
is that freaking rattling? Oh, I get it. Oh, that. Um, now I know why those windows are there. There's gonna be more zombies that are gonna bust through that window as soon as I get out of here, huh? As soon as I put the chemicals in the plant and I leave this room, that's when the zombies are gonna bust through the window. Oh, I gotta do something with the frickin' chemicals in the... ...water. I destroyed those herbs! Oh my god, no, you know what? Oh, fuck. Mm. Alright, I'm so doing that again. Turn the red lev lever. Good thing I didn't do much before that.
Oh yeah, it is. Oh wow, I managed to run past him without him noticing. Cool. I do admit I like how the remake adds a second uh, 
gem to the tiger uh, eyes level, to the tiger statue puzzle. Because initially it was just red and blue, then they made it red, blue, and yellow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, about to do some more inventory management. Cool. Alright, hold on a minute, guys. I'll be right back. Take your time. That must get old fast, Milton. What? We're going around with a headset doing Cartman voice. Everybody loves oh. that. I'm back. I'm going to light more of my joint. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much bigger the RE1 remake, or the remake of Resident Evil 1 is compared to the original game. Yeah, I, just like I said, the only issue I have are, is the lack of coloring, the color lighting, and the, uh, mm -hmm. the lack of the one room that is my favorite. Right. Where you can, like, see the finish line before you've reached it. Yeah. God, I forgot that even the uh, the in the plant room in the mansion where you have to put the chemicals in, you have to pay attention to the uh, to the pipelines. Yeah. 
you know, because obviously you want to kill the plant, but if you end up picking the wrong pipeline, there goes a bunch of free herbs you could have gotten. I just learned that lesson the hard way. Good thing I had a save point. Oh, I bet this is where shit's really gonna get real. This is where some zombies are gonna bust through the window, I'm sure. Just waiting for it to happen. Oh, why did you bring that up? What do you mean, why did I bring that up? No, Milton, he's talking about he's having explosives. <laughs> Take care of that body if I can still can. Hmm. Okay, good. Oh. And I have just completed Revelations 2 on the hardest difficulty with the infinite rocket launcher. So now I should have infinite ammo for all weapons. Oh, cool. Should being the keyword. Should be. Yo, know, fuck off with your Buddhism bullshit. <laughs> fuck <laughs> off with your Buddhism. <laughs> what do you got against Buddhism? It's not my religion. Get the fuck out of my country. Well, true. <laughs> Though I don't practice it anyway. Yep, strongest survivor. Unlock bonus infinite ammo. Perfect. the kerosene yep hmm. Hmm. I can grab those other herbs I'm still waiting for zombies to bust through that through those windows. I'm sure it's gonna happen at any moment. Like, there's like rattling outside. It's very nerve wracking. Mm. <laughs> it's very nerve wracking. <laughs> like, those damn motherfucking zombies used to stop rattling the windows. Wait, I know when they're gonna... As soon as I grab that thing and leave the room. <clears throat> Alright, well, here goes nothing. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen.
far they are from. Because if they're not down that corridor, I can probably make my way and put in the blue gemstone. So that was very, very close. Shotgun shells. All right. Not even out of the BCs, I'm getting attacked by some. <laughs> Like, fuck off. You know what fuck <laughs> off is? <laughs> fuck off, bitch. Fuck, fuck off. off. Alright, I'm good on this game for tonight. Okay, yeah, have a good night. Yeah, I'm gonna call it a night here soon. Good night, Jesse. Yeah, I'm gonna save this game. So I do have to get to bed. So what part are you at now? Oh, um, I just got the last of the masks, so all I'm gonna have to do is just put the masks in and defeat the crimson Get down head. to the... and get down to the residence? Yep, and then, uh, I've also got the, uh, the, the key to get to the snake. Hmm. Or in the original it was the snake key, as I called it.
All right, y'all. I'm going to call it a night. I got to okay. be up early in the morning. Well, have a good night and a good day tomorrow. I don't have to worry because I will be off and get it, having pizza. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I, uh... Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow is my Friday, and then I got a four-day weekend, because my awesome. birthday's on Monday, so I'm taking oh, Monday man. and Tuesday off. Well, if I forget to, if I, if I either forget or don't get the chance to say it in advance, happy birthday. Oh, and, thank uh, you. Yeah, and, um, I'll, uh, I will be working on, uh, Saturday, but uh, I'll see if I can try to play anything else with you by, between now and then. Sure, sounds like a plan. Alrighty, All take right. care and have a good night. You too, Jetty. Good night, everyone. <laughs>